Listen up, here's a story about a little bald man that lives in a blue world and all day and all night and everything he sees is blue just like him. I don't remember words. This tier list is obviously an 8.0 tier list and it is going to be from bottom up. And my bottom, seeing as they did not get buffed in 8.0, it's going to be Ganondorf. Ganondorf is still the worst character in the game now, I think by a somewhat significant margin, since a lot of the low tiers actually got buffed. Ganon has very little neutral unless you are a character that has to run in and try to hit him, which almost every single character can do better than him. But Esam, his nair is good. It's like, okay, yes. And that's it. it like, side B sucks, down B sucks. Like, most of his aerials are bad. Like, oh, but he can kill you in three hits. It's like, if he's hitting you three times before you are hitting him a single time and hitting him off stage, you got it. I've explained this many times. Ganon has the, honestly, in my opinion, the worst recovery in the entire game. Like, it is the worst and the most easily messed with in the entire game. Free. Like, Little Mac is harder to edge guard because at least Little Mac has side B with an amazing hitbox. Ganon just dies. He doesn't have anything to make up for it. Okay, so my second worst last time was Day to Day, but obviously Day to Day got buffed. I got pirate pants. After I dressed up like a pirate, I was like, damn, I kind of feel confident in this. So, <laughs> we bought pirate clothing. So the second worst character is, where is he? Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario is pretty bad. He's very slow, very easy to edge guard. Just doesn't do a whole lot. Has kill confirms, has kind of interesting combo routes, but a lot of it is predicated on the fact that uh, you don't know what you're doing because he's, he's so slow. He gets kept out by basically everyone. He can get edge guarded by a lot of characters. Yes, he has up. He had a shield, which is pretty good. And he still does. He still did get buffed last patch. And I don't want to ignore that. However, characters, this patch got buffed to like relevancy, whereas Doc got buffed to be slightly less bad, but still pretty bad. Third worst is probably going to be Lucario. I think this character is very, very overrated by anyone that doesn't put Lucario in like bottom five, bottom 10, fine, sure, maybe. But like this character is not good. This character is the clearly worst character in the game at zero by like a significant amount. Um, the mobility of this character is pretty okay, but I feel like the hitboxes just don't work the way they need to. Like nothing combos well enough, except for again, when you have zero aura, so your four hit combo does like 22 which isn't good. It's like, you basically have to get aura comebacks. Like, you're never going to be beating anyone without aura. And again, in this game, there are so many consistent kill confirms, there's so much just raw kill power, that most matchups, even the matchups below Lucario, like Doc is going to kill Lucario with like a down B on an edge guard, or like a four or a random forward or up B at a shield. Ganon has so much kill potential. There are very few characters in this game that are like weak. Like that's typically a lot of character saving graces. Like, oh, like they're bad in all these other aspects, but they'll kill you at 70. And so Lucario never really gets aura very often, like at all. I think Lucario is just fighting a losing battle the entire time because you have to be losing to fight your battle. It's probably, next is probably still Incineroar. I think Incineroar is pretty bad. Again, very slow, very exploitable. Like the buffs helped a little bit, but it's basically gonna help with the people that already had trouble against Incineroar, but it's not really gonna do anything against the people that didn't struggle against Incineroar. Like side B's still not good enough. You know, again, Incineroar, if it was faster, Incineroar's normals are incredible. Back air, down tilt, up air, all really good moves, but how do you ever hit them against someone that is playing the matchup correctly, which is to play in the mid-range of Incineroar and just make them struggle? But yeah, being slow is literally, like, the worst thing you could be in Smash Bros. Because, like, and also, realistically, Incineroar doesn't even cheese you like Ganon does, it's just his recovery's a little better and he has a better command grab and he has a counter. The only, literally, the big, the biggest difference between Ganon and Incineroar, which are the two worst characters in my opinion, is basically the fact that Incineroar has a frame three counter and slightly better normals overall, whereas Ganon has like Nair. Incineroar definitely just has a better disadvantage state and literally because of that, better disadvantage, maybe better advantage, honestly, um, but kind of close. Not really gonna edge guard like Ganon will, but again, just, Neutral B, down tilt into back air, down tilt to two frame is crazy, down tilt into forward tilt, or as Mars would say, the Cheeto fingers. Um, it's just good. The times you're gonna get that versus the times where you're going to get hit at zero and die, or just walled out forever, or get punished for trying to use revenge or get grabbed out of it because characters have setups into grabs or a lot better mix-ups. Like, it's, it's just not gonna be good enough. Yeah, honestly, I think now I have to go with Little Mac, because again, I don't think Little Mac is like actually that bad. I think Little Mac, Speed is so important because again, that creates mix-up, that creates inherent pressure because 
Little Mac runs at you and you get scared. And that is a big deal. But obviously no aerials, bad recovery. Like everyone knows the positives and negatives of Little Mac. And obviously the negatives clearly outweigh the positives, but he's fast, which makes him better than and all of the characters that I already put below, it's actually this way, um, except for Lucario, but just Lucario doesn't get to play the game. And of course, Little Mac has KO Punch, so he has the swing factor of like, oh, I'm losing, I'm losing, I'm winning now. But he's not as bad as, again, as the characters below. I think like there's a pretty decent gap between Incineroar and Little Mac. Is that it for low tier now? I think it's just bottom five is low tier. I think everyone else is pretty decent. So we are going to get into the next one, which I think is Mr. Simon and or Richter Belmont. I think the Belmonts are very exploitable. I think they have a lot of the problems that the bottom five have in terms of bad recovery, not that fast, but they have the range and they have the projectiles and they have the ability to wall you out incredibly well. Dash back F tilt is incredible. Up B is such a good out of shield option. You have obviously amazing ledge trapping between X and Holy Water and F smash and F tilt and all that. It's good, but still bottom 10. But again, I think there is a quite a significant jump between Little Mac and the Belmonts. Uh, if you've seen that, what's his name? I don't remember. The SoCal Belmont? Yeah, T3 Dom or whatever. He's sick. He's so cool. He does crazy stuff, but I think it's too inconsistent. I think this character is too inconsistent to be any higher because again, one big thing of, in tournaments is consistency. It's the ability for you to consistently win your matches, whether they're even matchups or slightly disadvantaged or slightly advantaged. And I feel like first off, Belmont doesn't have a crazy amount of good matchups. And second off, I feel like, you know, you could be winning and then get hit out of a double jump because you were trying to pressure someone and then just die. Dude, this is hard. So many characters got better. Next up, I'm I'm gonna put still, where is she? Uh, Isabel. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I haven't seen all the sauce that Isabel has because apparently people have been saying Isabel has sauce, but I haven't seen it. And I do think the buffs of this character do matter. I do think the up tilt, up smash, up air, and downer buffs do matter, but they don't matter enough in the grand scheme of things. Like, oh, up smash is a slightly better out of shield option. Downer is a slightly better out of shield option and easier to hit. Um, but I still feel like overall Isabel does struggle with just game flow. Like I feel like Isabel doesn't have a lot of win conditions besides help they have a bad recovery and continually side B and throw them off stage. Like the um, Lloyd Rocket thing doesn't, or the whatever, the down B doesn't really do enough like in terms of stage control because you can just smack it pretty easily. I don't know, there's just like not enough that this character has. I mean, again, I thought this character was pretty bad before. Uh, did get better. Again, that's why mid-tier, I think they were low-tier before. I still feel like this character's neutral is a struggle. Granted, I think dash tag also got faster, right? Let me check. Yeah, and dash tag is a little faster, so it's going to be a slightly better burst option, but like dash tag isn't exactly good. It's just like, oh, it's kind of annoying on platforms, which again, is good, it's better, but I don't think it like makes her kit suddenly good. Of course, she still has jab confirms, like jab, F tilt, jab, down smash, so she can kill you, but also how is she hitting this stubby frame three normal or frame five normal? I don't really know because she doesn't really want to get close to you because she wants to wall you out with forward air and back air. So her only real kill confirm, in my opinion, being jab isn't really going to help. Isabel more like is a smell. Next up, I'm going to put Kirby. I think Kirby, again, did get better. A lot of those things do matter. Kirby now kills way easier uh, because forward air does more damage, although I don't know if that messes up his combos. I haven't really seen conclusive evidence of that yet. Um, of course, the Kirby's discovered dare loops, which is going to matter a decent amount if they get like a jab lock or something like that, or just a random like parry weak hit up tilt, and that can just do a ton of damage, which is pretty good. Uh, but this character still struggles. This character gets camped. This character gets walled out. All the flaws that Kirby had kind of are exactly the same. It's just now they're going to kill a little bit earlier and uh, dash tech's going to be a little bit better and back air and forward are gonna do a little more damage. But I just think Kirby still does the same thing. And what it did before wasn't good. Granted, down tilt and F tilt are both amazing moves and I'm not gonna deny that Kirby doesn't have good normals, but good normals on a bad shell means the character is bad. That's why Incineroar is bad because Incineroar probably has equally as good normals as Kirby, maybe slightly worse and still bottom five. So good normals don't exactly make a good character, unfortunately, but the character's game plan is just weaker than a lot of other characters. This is going slow. Yeah, that happens. Next up, I'm honestly, I think this is a quite a dip from my last tier list, but I'm gonna put me Swordsman. I think me Swordsman is the worst me. Um, again, they have a sword, which is obviously going to be decent, but they're so slow. Their recovery is so bad, unless you use the spinny side B, which you don't want to because you definitely want Chakram because it's the only thing that makes this character do anything. Of course, you still have Tornado into Up B, like all the really basic confirms that have existed for the entirety of Ultimate. 
but they're not going to help and they're not going to be good enough and people aren't getting hit by that type of stuff anymore unless they're really impatient or don't know the matchup. So I think Swordsman is kind of still very much okay at best. Like this character hasn't learned anything new. It's literally like, are you going to get impatient and get hit by Tornado and Chakram? Are you going to get weak Chakram forward smashed at the ledge because your neutral got up for some reason instead of just jumping? Like next is going to be in my opinion still ice climbers whoops not high tier ice climbers i think they're just too much effort i know big d is literally pgr last season so a, a top 50 player is playing a bottom 10 character welcome to smash ultimate i think this character just struggles i think this character is just not worth the effort they have so many like you can't win these type of matchups like Pac-Man, like the Belmonts, like I've played a couple other ones and I'm just struggling to look through them. Game & Watch is awful. Uh, I think Min Min is going to be terrible for them. I think Snake is impossible. I think Zero Suit's impossible. There are so many matchups for this character that you just can't win. And then you have to have perfect tech all the time. Like I don't think their desyncs are worth it, especially once people get better at like rolling out of side B slash parrying the last hit of side B and just punishing them. And that's like a lot of Ice Slammer's offense is just lol side B, which granted, that move's broken. That move's one of the best moves in the game, in my opinion, like a top 20, 25 move, uh, but it's not good enough. Nana will still randomly die, although, again, I still think that is fairly uh, exaggerated. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but they're just they're just not worth the effort, says a person that, know, that knows that an Ice Slammer's player is top 50 on the PGR. Like, Big D is sick, but Ice Climbers are not worth the effort. Next up, I'm going to put Donkey Kong. I think Donkey Kong is very mediocre. His advantage state is very good, yes, but his recovery is incredibly exploitable. He has no combo breakers, and as a heavy character, that is going to be a struggle. It's something that is worse than Incineroar. Granted, he's fast, he has dash attack, he has three different spikes. He has the ability to do a ton of damage all of a sudden, and of course, you do have DKO on platforms, which is the cargo off throw up air, which can kill. However, it's not really that good in this game compared to a lot of other kill confirms, honestly, which is crazy to say. He does a lot of damage, but again, I do feel like overall his game plan is just kind of relying on people running into dash attack and back air, and it's not gonna work all the time. It's not gonna work, especially offline when people are able to react to stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, his disadvantage is one of the worst for the heavies. It's probably better than Ganon's, and that's it. I think it is worse than Incineroar's. I think it's worse than Bowser's, and he just kind of gets hit and gets hit and gets hit. There are so many things that work on just DK or just big characters. Also, a character that I probably forgot because I think they are still slightly worse than DK would be the other heavy. However, they got buffed, so they're not bottom two like last year. Listen, that's going to be King Day to Day. Uh, I think Day to Day is slightly worse than DK. Again, the buffs do matter. I think honestly, the most important buff is the down tilt angle change because now you're going to be able to two frame with that move, send it lower angles and get more repetitive edge guards or like over runoff into forward air. Granted, they did get buffed. Nair up air is now going to be a little bit better of a kill confirm because up air is stronger. You have the faster inhale, you have the stronger forward forward air that's we're going to do more damage over time and just send farther which is really good it is better don't get me wrong again last tier list day to day was here right that's an eight character jump that's pretty big especially considering the viable line for ultimate is like little man I think day to day just again struggles with general game plans a lot of the time it's people being impatient and running and like trying to throw moves out and then get double jump landing there or double jump gordo or double jump back air and things like that i still don't think this character kills very easily it's still better especially again with the down tilt buff but it's not going to be good enough or consistent enough to make this character like not bottom 10 11 ish so yeah uh next up is going to be i think piranha plant i think piranha plant is better than last patch. I do think forward or buff matters. I think that's the main buff that matters, honestly. Let me go check what they were again. Like down smash being faster, I don't know if that matters. I don't, <laughs> plants don't use up tilt ever. Like why would you use up tilt as an anti air when you can just patui? I don't know. But forward air is better, which is good. And then back air was already strong, so I don't really think that really matters that much. But forward air being buffed means that down throw forward air is going to work or just like chasing people off stage with forward air is going to be better because now it's frame seven pretty good having better aerials is always going to be nicer obviously so again especially compared to the other buffed characters and we're not counting Incineroar or Isabel um just underwhelming still again this character does has the ability to camp has the ability to edge trap but I feel like if you just play center stage against plant and understand that you can like grab plant when they're doing patui and then time your throw so you don't so you like super armor it you're suddenly going to be way better and do way better so like i feel like plant is a big knowledge check and a big don't get impatient and run into patui a bunch of times and run into down b a bunch of times which granted that happens on wi-fi 
But this, this isn't a Wi-Fi tier list, this is an offline tier list, so I don't think that's going to be happening as much offline. I think next up is going to be Bowser Jr. I think Bowser Jr. is an underrated character. I think I put Bowser Jr. a bit higher than most other people. I think Bowser Jr. is good. They have incredible throw confirms, they have killing moves out the ass with back air. Of course, you have up B, up B swing, you have forward smash, which two frames and lingers for forever. You have, of course, up smash. You have a bunch of crazy combos off stage. You have pretty decent edge guarding. You have good throw combos. You just have good damage. Again, the biggest problem with Bowser Jr is the fact that sometimes if side B's not working, your neutral's not going good, you're gonna lose. It's gonna happen. You're not going to do as good as you need to to keep up with a bunch of the other characters that are literally just better. It's less so that Bowser Jr. is bad and more that Bowser Jr. is worse than other characters, or honestly, that other characters are better than Bowser Jr. I think Bowser Jr. is a really strong character. I think this character has a bunch of tools. It's just characters above have more tools. Honestly, like to me, if I was thinking like a normal fighting game, I would think that Bowser Jr. is a like middle of the road character, mid tier, but a middle of the road character in ultimate because so many characters are good means that you're bottom 20, bottom 15. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like there's nothing against Bowser Jr. It's just this game is insane. Next up is going to be buffed Meta Knight. Is Bowser Jr. better than Meta Knight? Yeah, I'll put Meta Knight below Bowser Jr. I lied. Um, Meta Knight is still meh. I think that, um, Meta Knight is still pretty decent in terms of, like, a certain matchups feel good because you can ladder them, but if you can't ladder them, you're screwed, and that's still mostly what Meta Knight has. I mean, again, they did get buffed last patch. I think forward air got buffed, back air is more consistent, nair is bigger, tornadoes, uh, has the sweet spot for longer, but I feel like that doesn't matter enough. I feel like they didn't fix everything because I still have seen up B drop plenty of times playing myself or watching people stream. I've seen up B drop plenty of times, so it didn't actually fix it. This character just kind of has, I don't know. They're very one dimensional. They're incredibly one dimensional and they just don't do enough. Their disadvantage is incredible because they have five midair jumps, down B and tornado and like down air to like just kind of poke at people if they want to hit you. But this character just overall just, you know what they want. And it's not like certain characters like Palutena where if you're at 130, you're like, oh, she's gonna spam back air, cool. Like Meta Knight's landing aerials aren't that good. So it's a little different. They have to get things like run up short hop nair or back air and things like that. And it's not good enough of a strategy to just fish for it. And again, even like certain characters, you can SDI out of the up airs. So it's not gonna work and that sucks. Next up is going to be Diddy Kong. I think Diddy has better normals now. I think dash tag is better, forward air is better. Forward air is gonna be the main one, honestly, because now short hop forward air hits more characters because it's faster. But again, the removal of the simple infinite is going to make that a big deal. I don't think. I might be wrong because people might discover more setups for the infinite. I know there is a new infinite, don't get me wrong, but I do think Diddy, I mean, first off, I always thought Diddy was like overrated. I've never put Diddy super, super high. I think people are just really bad at the matchup because we didn't have to know it for a year and a half of the game. But I think Diddy struggles on platform stages heavily now that the infinite is at the very least more niche. I think Diddy has good stage control, is a good counter pick character, does pretty decent versus Palu, does pretty decent versus Zero Suit, uh, does pretty decent versus uh, Shulk, is probably like slight Shulk, but the character has somewhat decent matchups in the top tier, but they're still losing matchups, in my opinion, or maybe Diddy beats Zero Suit specifically, but also Zero Suit can just kind of time Diddy out. I think this character is a lot of trying to do the same thing over and over again, and in this game, because Diddy's things aren't strong enough, it doesn't work. I don't think people should be getting hit by as many, like, landing up air, landing air, down airs. Like, it's really not that good. Like, I still think Banana is an overrated projectile. It was so much better in Smash 4, and this might just be like, wow, Smash 4 Diddy was insane, and I shouldn't be using the merits of Smash 4 Diddy to negate Ultimate Diddy, but I just feel like Ultimate Diddy doesn't do enough damage compared to a lot of the meta characters. I feel like their stage control isn't a lot, just shield. Like, I think this character is very overrated. I think people just don't respect the character enough. Kind of like try to force their way into the character, even though Banana out of shield is a really good out of shield option. So you have to respect a character with good out of shield options that now lead into kill moves. But then if you're just not hitting their shield or you're trying to grab them or you're trying to do like those type of mix-ups, then like suddenly Diddy's gonna have a lot more difficult of a time. Uh, I'm gonna put me Brawler here. I think Brawler's frame data is really, really strong. I think Brawler's frame data is really, really strong. Even though it's not my personal favorite up B, I'm going to be, you know, talking about this with the 
best up B, which is the uh, punch up B. I don't remember what it's called. Piston punch. Because this character has kill confirms. This character has ways to get you on platforms, and then down throw up B will just kill you. Uh, down throw up air is a combo for a long time. This character has landing in air, which is safe on shield. It's like, like minus two or minus three or something like that. So like landing there, down tilt, fair dash attack does like 35. I think this character has a decent projectile in terms of shot put. It's not great. It's like probably a, a, the worst end of projectiles, but projectiles are pretty good and it does like 18 or something ridiculous like that. So this character's damage output is pretty good. The biggest problem of this character clearly, clearly, clearly is killing. Because even with the killing up B, you're not killing at a shield on a light character until like 125, 130, which isn't great. Of course, they do have a command grab if you want. They have a decent recovery. They have flip jump. So it's not super easy to edge guard this character depending on which set you're using. But I feel like overall, they just, they don't have an, if they have like a better two framing thing, like if down tilt backer confirmed or down tilt was an easier two frame. I don't know if it actually does two frame, but I've never gotten it. But if down tilt back air was like better at higher percents, then like suddenly it's like, damn, super good. Um, but this character, this character does have a decent amount of speed in terms of air mobility, not an air mobility, but like fall speed. So you can do a little mix ups. Granted, their throws aren't that good, especially because like after what, like 60%. Well, I guess down throw up, he still works. So for damage, I don't know if it's plus on hit though. Um, it's just not, it's, it's, this character's good. This character's pretty good. I think that like the Diddy Me Brawler area is when you get to like good characters or like maybe Bowser Jr. Like is when you get to like good characters. But I think Me Brawler is still definitely bottom half, obviously. Next up is, I think, going to be K. Rule. K. Rule did get buffed this patch. I know that dash attack is better. Um, you have more belly armor, which is amazing. You have more armor on side B, which is very good for the general game plan of this character, considering they love using crown. But I feel like overall, K. Rule is pretty good. I mean, I think that K. Rule was hella underrated last patch. People were like, K. Rule bottom five. And I'm like, what are you talking about? K. Rule's clearly somewhere in mid tier. I think K. Rule is pretty decent character with a bunch of spikes pretty decent ledge trapping a lot of kill potential obviously you get like guaranteed kills of like 140 off of a grab and of course things like dash attack are just going to kill you before that things like forward air nair being relatively safe uh depending on you know what out of shield options you have but this character is like pretty decent i think that k roll was always pretty decent especially well not always but after the buffs that they got last time which was was that 7.0 or was that 6.0? I don't remember. 7.0 happened a long time ago, so it, my perception of time in COVID is kind of screwed. But I think Carol's good. I don't think they have great matchup spread, honestly. I think they do lose to most top tiers, if not all top tiers. But granted, most of these characters do anyway, except for like Diddy and Meta Knight because they're counterpick characters, but then they struggle with more characters down here. You know, I think the biggest flaw, honestly, like the single biggest flaw of K. Rool is the fact that most characters can rinse repeat edge guard on K. Rool if they don't have a jump by just kind of grabbing the ledge. They upbeat, you drop off, double jump, hit them with a back air and then do it again. And if they go high, then you like go on stage and charge a forward smash. That happens a lot. That's going to be the biggest flaw of K. Rool IMO, but it's character still has stuff. Like the neutral is annoying now. It's a lot harder to hit, you know, armor because of this, the fact that there is more belly armor, the side B is better. So it's just, it's not... It's, he's not bad. He's not bad at all. I, he's pretty decent. Uh, next one, I'm going to put Byleth. I think Byleth is, you know what you're getting into when you're fighting Byleth. It is a strong sword type character that has really good whiff punishing, but is slow. But they don't have the neutral of, let's say, Corrin now because Corrin got buffed. Like, they don't have pin. They don't have great rising arrows, in my opinion. Except, like, Nair, kind of. But Nair's fun, but I don't think it's, like, a super, super great move. I think this character is okay. Two useless moves. Neutral B, you should never get hit by neutral B. And down B is Falcon Punch, which as y'all know, even if you get a shield break with this character, you're probably just gonna tip her F smash anyway. But I don't know, this character does do a decent amount of damage. I mean, down air is strong. I think it does 20 or 22 or something, does a ton of shield damage. If you get reads or tech chases, you can get down smashes, which can kill ridiculously early. Granted, if you DI, it's probably not gonna kill you till 80 or something anyway, but 80 is pretty early still. Character has okay um, edge guarding, mediocre recovery because tether, uh, granted, if you mess with it too far, you die, which is crazy. Uh, no out of shield options, unfortunately, it's, unless it's frame 10, I think, which is up smash, or 9. I don't remember. It's not particularly fast, and it doesn't really hit behind him. So, just gonna be okay. Like, I feel like crumbling under pressure in shield, like, Byleth's pressure and spacing and combos don't make up for the fact that they crumble under pressure and crumble under edge guarding. Like, let's say a character who is above, which would be Min Min. Like, Min Min has incredible stage control and all this, like, cheese and edge guarding and blah, blah, blah. And Byleth is like, I have a sword, which isn't good enough, in my opinion. Uh, next up is going to be Villager. I think Villager obviously got a bit better. I think Villager was, uh, like, ten, five, ten characters worse than this last patch. 
Uh, but the buffs, in my opinion, one of the biggest buffs, honestly, is up tilt. Because up tilt is now head invincible. So now it's just a clean anti-air, and it's going to kill. That move is so strong. I think Villager, of course, comparing to Isabel, has a better neutral, has more consistent killing, has tree, has better edge guarding because of bowling ball. Like, this character has a lot of swing factors in Villager's favor. Of course, does struggle with a decent amount of top tiers. Palutena invalidates this character. Pikachu invalidates this character. Um, there's a couple other ones that just, like, give this character game and watch. It just makes this character hell of struggle, but... Definitely better. I think better anti-airs being a little bit faster in terms of aerials, having stronger, so faster down air, stronger up air. I think those do matter quite a bit, especially with the RNG turnips. That can get kills really, really early. Unfortunately, uh, I didn't make a tier list after I knew Villager had the Lloyd rocket thing, the, the, the Lloyd jacket, which was awesome. And I'm so sad they got rid of it because it was honestly one of the coolest things in Ultimate, in my opinion. But it was obviously a glitch, so they had to get rid of it. But Villager was cool. Villager's super cool. Or was super cool because of that. I'm just gonna double check the buffs. Down B getting faster honestly does matter as well uh, in terms of like all the aspects, which is nice because it means it's less punishable. But I just think Villager is still like you know it's a it's a character you have to know the matchup, you have to understand how to navigate the field of the slingshots and the tree and the bowling ball and all that. But it's not going to be enough to make them like high tier. They're just better. Six seven characters in a game as balanced as ultimate's a pretty big jump. Like that is a big jump. I, I know who I want to put, but everyone's going to get mad at me for it. Marth. I think Marth is still okay. After uh, playing with the buffs, I just think that Marth is still eh. Tipper's help, obviously, more consistent, but the character is just still, it's still the same. It's still inconsistent. Oh, cool, you can landing back air a little easier. Like, it matters, but... Marth is still just okay. Marth is still clearly worse Lucina. Marth is, like, there are so many better sword characters that you could play in this game. I don't think that this character is great. Like, I didn't think the character was great before. And, like, especially, like, this character could have been better, but I feel like all the characters that Marth could have risen, risen above also got buffed or got buffed past Marth. I might be wrong, because, again, why would anyone play Marth when you can just play Lucina? So I doubt I'm going to see a lot of Marths, if I'm being honest. Unless Leo decides to again, but also Leo plays Joker, who is spoilers top three. So there's no reason to play Marth unless it's like, I want to have fun. Like, I don't think it covers matchups because Marth still loses to Pika. But like, Marth is just not great. Like, I feel like, again, str honestly struggles to kill unless you get your tippers. But again, getting tippers is inconsistent, so you can't consistently kill. Um, the stage control, like the floatiness of this character is meh. You have a mediocre disadvantage state. You have a mediocre recovery. How do you ever get back on stage? Yeah, if the sour spots got buffed to this character, that would be fantastic because it would mean that it wasn't the worst to not get sour spots. Even if they nerfed the sweet spots a little bit, if they made the sour spots a little bit better, because more consistency is always going to be better. Marth recovery is amazing. In what land is Marth recovery amazing? Um, I'm gonna go with me, me gunner. Me Gunner's pretty degenerate, honestly. Me Gunner's strategies are very difficult to deal with with some characters. Their projectiles are amazing. They have a really good recovery because if you use Shine, which you should be using because it makes you better against zoners, then you can Shine, turn around, forwarder. So this recovery is actually very, very versatile. The neutral of this character is incredibly versatile because of all the projectiles that they have. It is really difficult sometimes to get in on Gunner. It is almost impossible to get off the ledge against this character as basically everyone. Like, probably one of the best ledge trapping in the game, even if it doesn't kill you really early. Character skill potential is good too. You have down smash, you have back air, you you have dash attack, you have up air, you have charge shot if you're using charge shot, although if you're using charge shot, your edge trapping is worse because the best edge trapping one is the smoke bomb. But this character has like pretty decent kill potential. This character is pretty decent neutral. The out of shield options for this character aren't great, especially if you are using the better uh, recovery up B as opposed to the like super strong up B out of shield, which is my personal favorite, but no one uses it because you don't want to die because having a worse offstage is not worth the out of shield option. But a lot of the times it's going to struggle to even get out of shield against Gunner, or it's like, cool, you hit their shield and they went jump forward or zoomed backwards and then started camping again. So this character is pretty fun, honestly, but sucks that like one of the worst zoners still just because the other projectile zoners in this game are very, very good. If you can deal with the degeneracy, the matchup's pretty easy, but if you can't, you get bodied, so. Next up is gonna be Mewtwo. I'm gonna be honest, I've played Mewtwo, I've seen the patch notes. I think Mewtwo's better, because again, I think this is higher than what I put Mewtwo last time. But I don't think Mewtwo is like significantly buffed, because like all of the buffs that they got 
other than the shadow ball one kind of don't matter i mean being stronger is better obviously killing earlier is better but it like hurdles some of the combos at like mid percents because back air used to combo into itself and now sometimes it doesn't especially if you di like down and away it's just not gonna work um mewtwo just has kill potential but down throw as far as i've seen is not really a combo if you di out granted it's fast and people mess up but like mewtwo's disadvantage is still mediocre mewtwo still has lol tail um and again the reason that like people are like oh my god they should buff the tail hurt box it's like no i think having half of your tail be a hurt box makes sense more of pika's tail is a hurt box than not more of most characters tails of her is a hurt box than not except maybe charizard but also charizard's broken so like that sh that's it shouldn't be all charizard it should everyone should be more like mewtwo the problem with mewtwo is the fact that a lot of the times when mewtwo gets hit or is moving his tail just goes whoosh it just flies out there it is huge and it just goes everywhere so you randomly get hit at times that you really shouldn't because the tail doesn't stay close to mewtwo that is the problem if they change the idle animations or the animations of mewtwo to make the tail less crazy then suddenly mewtwo gets a lot better but that's not why that like it's not like oh the tail hurtbox should be smaller it's like no the tail animation should be different i think that matters a lot but yeah i mean crazy kill potential honestly pretty decent uh projectile now especially because of the buffed the charge release i think is now frame four which is crazy fast like that's so fast but i still feel like doesn't do enough granted they're fast as hell they're so fast but again you're you can't move with mewtwo because if you're doing like dash dancing stuff then your tail is just whoosh and you're gonna get hit by accident and that sucks zelda i think zelda again she got buffed 7.0 this character is strong. This character does a ton of damage. This character's zoning is some of the most obnoxious in the entire game. However, once you learn how Zelda's down B works and you have more experience with this character, she suddenly gets a lot worse. I'm gonna be honest, didn't have a lot of Zelda experience. Then COVID happened, have to play Wi-Fi. Now I have a ton of Zelda experience because Wi-Fi Zelda is common. But when you have those type of things, when you get that much magic experience, even if it's Wi-Fi, you can kind of learn how Phantom works, you can learn how Side B works, you can learn all the little setups. Granted, haven't played Ven, who is clearly the best Zelda, and I think anyone trying to challenge that is wrong, unless maybe Riziasu from uh, Japan, although they, put, they main random. But I think Zelda, overall, has very strong zoning, good combo break, obviously, in Nehru's love. A bunch of different options but the disadvantage of this character like combo break is good in terms of neighbor's love but the disadvantage is not because you just kind of wait below zelda and they're very floaty so you throw a move out they air dodge and you punish them for it that sucks like i don't really know how this character gets off the ledge you just have to kind of be careful about up air because granted this character will kill you now because up air is so strong phantom is stronger of course you still have lightning kicks you have forward smash you have four tilt which is stronger from seven point or stronger because of 7.0 like this character kills mad early but this character's neutral is mad eh. assuming you know how to deal with phantom because phantom's very good bayo is definitely a character that can go up because as the bayos learn new combo routes and learn how to use all the buffs suddenly this character can be much better however this character was bottom 10 bottom 11 ish before and now clearly like more around bottom 25 which again a 14 to 15 character jump is big i know up tilt back air is better side b back air is a thing up B is harder to SDI out of, so you don't get as much. Like, this character definitely could be, like, five, seven spots higher than this, but I just don't know enough right now, and unfortunately, we're not gonna know enough for a while, at least in the U.S., because haha, COVID. But, uh, Bayo's, Bayo's pretty solid. Again, the problem is, her neutral is still eh. Her neutral is still mediocre, which, granted, good, because she hits you and deals you 70, but a lot of characters in this game can just continually hit her in neutral and get confirms off of that neutral hit, whereas Bayo is going to have to, like, jump ABK or side B or run up up tilt, which is punishable. And granted, of course, you can hit, you can get those hits. And, you know, something being punishable doesn't mean it's always bad because otherwise most moves in this game are bad. Bayo does a ton of damage. Her edge guarding is very good. Disadvantage is pretty strong. It's kind of difficult to deal with. She's just, she's just strong. And I'm really excited to see where this character goes because I, I mean... She was toxic in Smash 4, right? But I was a fan of how she played. So if Bayo is like low high tier, high tier type area, I'm personally fine with that because I love the design of this character. I think she's very, very cool. And as long as she's not killing you at zero, you're fine. Next up, I'm going to put Ridley. Ridley technically got nerfed this patch because of the down B change because down B now acts as a grab, which means that you can't do down through or down B mix-ups and get the full skewer. Granted, you get the full damage and it does do more damage, but you don't get like that was like the biggest basically the only use 
of down B. The fact that you can't go down throw down B mix up is actually pretty big because there is less threat. If I know if a Ridley is at death percent last stock and I get down thrown at zero and they're trying to make a comeback, I just mash air dodge because they down B and then I dash forward and punish them for it. But other than that, this character's still good. I think this character is very underrated according to most people. I think this character is quite strong. I think really good neutral, down tilt, forward air, forward tilt, nair, all very good moves. Up tilt, up air is a kill confirm. You have like four different two frames with like forward tilt and forward smash. And of course you have the fireballs, which are really good for edge guarding. Like this character, edge guarding is pretty decent. Uh, of course, unfortunately you don't have a ton of angles, which means that your recovery is a little bit more exploitable, but also good because it's really, really strong and almost impossible to mess with, especially if they learn how to hold down to have their hitbox go through the stage and then they grab it invulnerably. And it's hard. And it's pretty, it's pretty hard to edge guard this character unless you have incredible edge guarding tools or a counter. Like, you basically need a counter to edgeguard this character. Like, Pikachu even struggles to edgeguard Ridley, which is crazy. But I think Ridley is, like, overall slept on. Like, I think this character has really strong kill potential, really strong combos, good neutral, not as bad of a disadvantage state as people want to believe Ridley has. Granted, if you get hit by, like, let's say a Palu or a Pika, yeah, you're gonna be taking a ton of damage, but spoilers, they're really good characters. So that happens anyway to most characters. It doesn't really matter that it's Ridley. Like, I combo Bowser harder than I do Ridley, and Bowser is a much better character. Like, it's not always about, like, oh, but they get comboed because everyone gets comboed by good characters. So, like, whatever. But Ridley, overall, good character. I would say very, like, pretty solid character. Definitely a tournament viable character. I don't know why people think Ridley's, like, bad. Like, Ridley's pretty good. Robin. I think Robin's next. I used to think Robin was very, very bad. And then Robin got buffed. And now they got better because again, like this is basically the same thing as what 7.0 had because no changes happened. But Robin has good aerials, good, great air to airs and anti-air moves. Those are all very, very strong. Like the buffs did make this character better, especially getting sword back quicker and thunder back quicker, I think it is, or thunder charges faster. So you're able to get your thunder charge that you want more. Side B being bigger means that like having like side B going farther means that Robin basically gets the ability to come back to stage a little bit easier because you have to really preemptively go edge guard Robin, which is not going to be as easy. But like this, Rob, like Robin's pretty good. Like, you know, obviously it's Wi-Fi, but we've seen like decent. We've seen Angel do pretty good in uh, Wi-Fi tournaments. He's pretty strong. I think Robin's combo game is pretty good. You have Arc Fire, Arc Fire, Up Air. You of course have the really good edge trapping between Arc Fire, Down Smash, Thoron, Forward Air, things like that. Robin's like pretty good. I think Robin's like a pretty solid character. Does get edge guarded still. Does have a mediocre disadvantage state in my opinion. Overall, just the character's good. The character's good. I don't know why anyone thinks this character is like not like this is like getting close to high tier because uh, high tier and top tier are quite big. But I think Robin's like a pretty upper mid tier, so yeah. Like obviously if the character was faster, they'd be more threatening if this character uh, had better tilts because all their tilts are like terrible, it'd be better, but doesn't need it, honestly. I mean, of course, if you want your character to be top tier, yeah, you need it, but Robin's good. Robin is a very solid pick. Banjo, yeah, Banjo next. I think Banjo is honestly sick. I could definitely see Banjo being better than this. I could agree with maybe like low high tier with Banjo, but Overall, Banjo is just a very, unfortunately, one-dimensional type of character. Granted, the confirms this character gets are wonderful. Uh, grenade and forward air, grenade into side B. We have the new confirms with the uh, neutral B jump cancel side B thing that I've seen DD uh, post. I'm sure other people have done it too, but I saw DD post it. Um, there's just, this character has some tech. This character has some good stuff. But unfortunately, the character ends up just devolving into down B over and over again. And if you're good at picking up items, suddenly the character gets way worse. You like, can't really edge guard this character unless you get more than five edge guard opportunities a stock because of Wonder Wing, of course. Wonder Wing into ledge grab is unmess, unmess, unmess withable. Um, but like Banjo's pretty fast. Banjo's pretty decent normals. Like the the unfortunate thing is their random normals don't lead to combos. Like four tilt and down tilt don't lead to combos. Granted, down tilt is one of the best two framing moves in the entire game. It's like Mario dash attack but sends lower and lingers longer. I think. Um. Like, Banjo's two-framing ability is ridiculous. You have Down Smash, you have uh, Forward Smash, you have Wonder Wing, you have Down Tilt. Like, this character two-frames all day, so if you're a character that just dies to continuous two-frames, you're gonna die. Like, this character will just kill you. But yeah, I think I think uh, Banjo's pretty good. Like, pretty strong, just not strong enough, and too one-dimensional, ironically. Even though I don't think the character should be one-dimensional, maybe it's just the players of the character. But again, I just wish that uh, the normals of this character like comboed into something. Like if, if up tilt was like, instead of a kill move, a combo move, or like forward tilt sent into knockdown earlier or sent at a lower angle so you'd get tech chases, something, or like a better throw, but like there's not enough. Next I'll put Puff. I think Puff is really good. I think Puff's kind of broken, but 
looking at the matchup chart that, like, I was I was in the chat when Base Mage and Hungerbox made their matchup chart, and Puff loses to a lot of characters. Even Base Mage's optimistic opinion still loses to a bunch of characters. Granted, doesn't make Puff low tier again. I think Puff is a pretty strong character. Again, I think if I had to give like a line of like you can play this character in tournament and, can, and think you're going to do well, it's Bowser Jr. and on. So Puff is pretty good. I mean, Dare Loops are insane. The edge guarding of this character is insane. The kill confirms the setups that this characters have with like tech chases on platform with Sing into up air rest. Like this character can kill you, but sometimes you get walled out for an entire game. And that sucks. And that definitely happens. A lot. Well, a lot of matchups. Characters like Banjo, characters like Robin, characters like Zelda, characters like maybe Bowser Jr. even in this matchup. Like, Puff loses to a decent amount of matchups, but the swing factor, in my opinion, is going to make Puff better. Like, I think Puff's good. I think Puff is a very, very good character. I think very underrated. But, again, just the inability for her to really deal with swords because of her, like, if she was a little faster on the ground, or like, Forward Tilt was a little bigger, or something like that. Puff would be fine, but they're not. I super hot take. Get ready to leave. Y'all are gonna be mad about this. Falco. I don't understand why everyone thinks Falco got a lot better. Falco is basically the same character. Falco has side B now. And down tilt is slightly faster, which means that you can get one specific combo that's better, but you have to be using down tilt in neutral, which is not going to be a good neutral tool. It's not big. So this character is still up tilt the character. This character is still advantage state the character. Now you have a little bit better of an advantage state because you can side B people that get away from your combo. It honestly doesn't matter that much because Falco was always the character that hit you and did a ton of damage. Falco would up tilt people at zero and they go to 80. Now they go to 85. <laughs> like it's not that crazy. Like Falco's combos are basically the same. Falco's ability to rack up damage is basically the same. Because like, sure, you can do things like the fair drag down down tilt, but it's like, or you could just go up tilt, up tilt, up air, up air, up air, and then run under people and do up tilts. And like, sure, like no one's escaped, like no character escapes that. Unless you're like Wolf specifically, because Wolf's air mobility is ridiculous, or Yoshi, because you have double jump. This character isn't going to be running up to you and down airing your shield, because it's not going to happen. Or if it is, you can kind of tell and either like dash away or just like parry it. I don't understand why people are like falco's neutral is so much better because down air it's like who is using down air in neutral falco's a good character again don't get me wrong but i don't think this character is better than a lot of other characters larry uses dare a lot I, he got it whatever and the flaws are why falco was bad not because he didn't have enough strength because he has one of the best advantage states in the entire game and now it's slightly better so now it's a now it's like top seven advantage states instead of top 10 like whatever oh i forgot a character sorry luigi falco's better than luigi Speaking of one-dimensional characters, um, I think Luigi's disadvantage is too bad. I think people really need to learn how to respect down B and Nair, obviously, during combos. Really, people need... A big thing is people need to learn how to get in the way of Luigi's side B, similar to the tech check with Falcon and Ganondorf. Um, I think that is honestly going... I, that, that would be huge, because if Luigi does a side B, and you run into it, and then if you're, like, someone mid-percent, you, like go up, tech the wall, and then get in the way of the double jump one, suddenly everything is way better. Granted, this character grabs you and kills you. This character grabs you at a bunch of percents and does a ton of damage. This character has decent two-framing with, like, Zare, down air, down tilt, things like that. Those are good. But I think Luigi is too inconsistent. He loses to so many matchups. He loses to so many people below him. I think he loses to the Belmonts. He might lose to Isabel. He might lose to Mewtwo. He might lose, he definitely loses to Me Gunner. He loses to Banjo. Like he loses to a ton of zoning characters and then they just hope they get a grab. But like also people don't just platform camp. Like people don't platform camp Luigi because everyone gets impatient, which like is fine, but it would it, it hurts. I think Luigi's out of shield options are incredible. Up B, like you do something on the ground that is like minus like five, you get up B and you die. Like that's crazy. But I think I think Luigi's just too exploitable to too many characters. Uh, and that's gonna be what put, like Luigi has decent matchups in top tier, but again, if you are going to run into a lot of characters in this game, even if it's a slight loss, that's going to be bad. Also, you can SDI his uh, combo behind him and it makes it way harder to kill. Pit got a lot better. Pit was bottom 10 last patch. I think this character is a complete character now. Not higher top tier, but a complete character. Down tilt up air being a kill confirm is amazing. Down throw leading to a 50-50 of down throw up air or forward throw to kill at like 100 at the ledge is going to be incredible. This character, overall got a lot better very solid character now because before it was like oh pit 
doesn't really have anything bad about them, but they don't really have anything good about them. Now they have a ton of stuff that's good about them because now they have a really good juggling aerial and up air because it's disjointed and it sends you straight up. The biggest problem is that if Pit tried to juggle you before, it would send you out. So you would just be able to land or they would have to forward air and get you off stage. When granted, Pit's like edge trapping, edge guarding kind of thing isn't that good against most characters, but the juggling of this character, because especially of their fast ground speed and dash attack, is going to be incredible. It's going to be really good. So now that you finally have the ability to get people above you and keep them above you, that's going to be huge. The advantage date got so much better, not to mention, of course, the kill confirms. And not to mention, of course, the better down smash, the better up smash, which not, up smash kills so early now. So if you get a down tilted on a platform, you die or like down aired because you're trying to get greedy, like you die now, like way earlier. Down smash sending at the different angle is going to help a lot. So like this character like grabs you at zero, deals you like 40, and then, you know, tries to make you ledge jump if you're, cause that combo typically hits out cause it's like down throw, down or uh, nair, which is like 34 or something like that. You know, you do that and then you just play your advantage. You can easily play your advantage because you just kind of covered the ground options like neutral get up, roll, get up attack. And then if they jump, you can now just hit you above because you have up air, which is incredible. Also the disadvantage of this character got way better because down B goes away so quickly now. So you are going to be able to actually land. Like I've played against the character and I've done a forward air and then they do they did their um the down B and then I'm like cool it was a full hop forward air so I'm like I'm gonna up air and then they air dodged through my up air because it had almost no lag like that's crazy it is so good for this character to get out of disadvantage now it is honestly the second biggest buff after the up air buff because I think the up air buff is clearly the biggest and then the down B and then the other ones are like pretty good Pit's a real character now Pit and Dark Pit again they're still functionally the same in my opinion uh, maybe Pit's a little better because side B is more consistent still. And of course, side B hitting up now means that you're gonna juggle if it's not at death percent. So yeah, like I think this character's good now. I think this character's like very good. Next up, I'm going to put Toon Link. Toon Link is a speedy boy. This character is fast. This character is so fast, has incredibly consistent confirms, great normals, honestly, with forward tilt and up tilt and back air and forward air. Like, this character did get buffed last patch. Unfortunately, the buffs of this character, like, pale in comparison to the Young Link buffs, because people want to compare that. I think Toon Link is pretty good. Like, I think Toon Link is a good character. I think this character is very consistent, very strong, has incredible comeback potential because bomb equals... Uh, like since bomb is an item, it doesn't scale with rage, which means bomb fair is going to kill really early. That also happened in Smash 4. But like, I think Toon Link nice. I think Toon Link's good. I, do, I think Toon Link is like a very, very good character. Also, of course, he still has like back air up B. He has ledge trump up B. He has like good tools. Zare is still better. Um, although I don't really know how good that is. But like Toon Link is good. He's not as good as the other characters because he's a little floatier, which means his disadvantage is a little worse. Granted, it makes his recovery a little bit better than let's say Young Link's, but it's just not overall going to be great. I don't know. This character, this character's decent. This character's pretty good. I'm gonna put Rosa. I know DeBuzz thinks very, very highly of Rosa. It's hard for me to judge his opinion 100% accurately because he's a tri-main, or at the very least a dual main, where he's going to play a lot of Olimar. In most matchups, to be honest, he plays Olimar. Like, he is an Olimar main with a Rosa secondary. Rosa has a ton of good stuff, has really good matchups, can slow down the game a lot, has pretty decent edge guarding, pretty okay kill potential. Like, this character has a lot of good. Of course, some characters are better at getting rid of Luma as others, and of course, the shield buff did help that because now you're not going to be able to spam as easily safe aerials on shield that kill Luma. Like, I don't know. I think Rosa is a good character. However, she's still exploitable. She's still very floaty, which means that her disadvantage is going to be mediocre. Uh, she's just she's good she's really good but also she's hard she's really difficult and if you mess up one like attack cancel suddenly loom is dead which can be your stock uh, i think this character is very edge guardable but people are very bad at it i think an underrated move for rosa is her side b i think rosa's side b is busted i think the move is so good very much so the top of mid tier uh in my opinion but mid tier nonetheless and granted top of mid tier is good like, i think this character is good i think rosa is very very good but not Super incredible. Oh wait, sorry, I forgot one character. Uh, Lucas is going to be here. Lucas is mad good. 
I don't know why people pretend this character is bad. This character is one of the safest characters overall on shield. This character has three kill throws, one throw that forces you to jump or air dodge, otherwise you're gonna get hit by fair. This character has incredible two framing, really good edge guarding between PK fire, PK freeze, forward tilt, down air, down smash. This character has a bunch of kill confirms because you have things like landing nair into down tilt grab, landing nair into down tilt forward tilt. This character is good. This character is so good. I think this character, if I'm so sad that COVID happened for many reasons, but you know, in terms of Smash Ultimate, I wanted Remy to travel more. I think Remy from Oregon is an incredible player. It took me like four money matches to beat him in one. This character is incredible. This character does a ton of damage, has a really good projectile, has double jump cancel Zare stuff, which can combo you across the stage into down air or forward tilt or grab. It's so hard to get off the ledge versus this character. This character's good. Now, fuck this. This character's better than Rosa. This character's better than Rosa. I don't care. This character's better than Rosa. Like, this character is crazy. This character is so good, and I want Remy to be able to pilot this character more and longer. If you want to check out Remy, just check out some of the VODs from Genesis. You should check out specifically Remy versus MVD. Spoilers, MVD ended up winning that set, but it was an incredible set, and Remy played it so well for the most part, and it just showed me, like, playing him, I was like, damn, Lucas is insane. He got, like, 13th, or he got 17th at Genesis, beating hella players. Remy is good. This character's good. Don't sleep. I can definitely understand if people want to put him high tier, because this character's dumb. This character's amazing. Okay, so, high tier. We're in the top 40-ish characters. The bottom of high tier, we're gonna have Sheik. I think Sheik's a good character. I don't think anyone will disagree that Sheik is a good character. Sheik has really good combos, really strong edge guards, really good ledge trapping, some decent kill confirms in terms of four tilt up air forward smash, four tilt up air on platform into up smash, raindrop, uh, which extends the window of up of four tilt up air up smash quite a lot. Forward smash did get buffed for this character. I don't know how influential that is because I haven't seen a Sheik play since the patch. I didn't see forward smash stop that much anyway, uh, but I think Sheik's good. I think the biggest problem with Sheik is the fact that she does not have a lot of disjoints, so while she's safe, she loses to a lot of people swinging into her and trading, which is kind of what she lost to in Smash 4. She was just a much better character overall because she had more consistent killing. She had like 50-50s with 4th or Bouncing Fish, which she doesn't have in this game. Granted, Needles are incredible. Needles up smash is great, kill confirm. Like, this character can kill. The issue with this character is not Sheik can't kill. It's Sheik has to put herself in weird situations to get hits where opponents can do more damage than her if you trade. That is Sheik's flaw, is trading, and people just throwing out hitboxes about that. Like, that's a big deal. But Sheik's really good. I think Sheik is one of the coolest characters in the game, one of the most fluid characters in this game. Uh, but people are like, oh, but you you have to do 19 moves to do a 40% combo. It's like, okay, but you got a 40% combo. Who cares? It's not like it's super difficult. It's just more effort than some other characters. But, like, that doesn't make Sheik bad. That just means she has more fluidity and can do more stuff. The, the, in, the inability for her to withstand trades plus the fact that she's light is what makes it bad. If she was heavier, she'd be fine. She'd be even better. Next, I'll put Corrin. I think this is about where Corrin goes. Corrin got a ton better. Corrin was a bottom 10 character that is now real. I read all the buffs. Apparently, there was a shadow buff with Forder having more uh, hitstone, or I think it's stronger, so it has more hitstone. Let me check. Yeah, so Corrin's forward smash is stronger. Forward air, uh, since it has since it does more damage, has more hits done, which means that forward air into dragon fang shot is a confirm, and forward air into back air, like forward air just combos into stuff better, whether it's pin, which you have to like 50-50, or sometimes it's true, I guess, if they DI out. You have forward air dragon shot, dragon fang shot, the neutral B, which is insane. Like that's a crazy confirm, like that that works. Um you have forward air back air. This character is just stronger now. The ability for you to go pin jump and have be able to act out of it faster is really nice. The fact that pin in the air has less lag means that you can go things that I've seen Cosmos do, especially in Smash 4, with like run back, jump, pin to catch someone being aggressive with like a grab or something, and then still be able to like landing there. Like that's a big deal in my opinion. This character became a lot more solid. One of the more interesting sword characters in this game, not one of the best sword characters in this game because sword characters are busted. There's like five above her, I think. Him, her, them, whatever. But, like I think Corrin's very good now. Watching Cosmos, it just seems like this character has so much control. Granted, they're still slow. Their recovery still isn't that great. And those are going to be the most, like the main things that are keeping Corrin from being upper high tier slash like top tier. So yeah, I think this character's good. I think this character is really strong. Next up is going to be Hero. Speaking of sword characters, the reason that I think Hero is good is because he is one of the most extreme meta checks in this game. 
because he beats like every zoner because he has bounce and is able to wall them as well. He has a sword. He has a ton, he does a ton of damage. He's obviously inconsistent in terms of, did you get your good rolls? Did you not get your good rolls? But I think that hero, even with bad, with like normal rolls, like an average roll, which again, if you're going to say consistency with average rolls, um, with his down B, he's a good character because he's going to get buffs. He's going to still get certain kill moves. He's also still probably get kaboom and zoom if he needs it. His, his recovery is really good. His neutral is pretty strong. And I don't really understand why people pretend this character is bad because like, oh, well, he can, Hocus Pocus can kill you. It's like, okay, well, don't Hocus Pocus. Like, I think Hero's really good. Hero beats literally every zoner in the game, beats Samus, in my opinion, beats Pac-Man, beats a lot of the zoners that I put below, beat some of the zoners that I haven't put. I think Hero maybe beats like Young Link too and Link. Uh, so I think this character's good. I think this character's really, really strong. Uh, underrepresented, I would say. People don't really like playing this character, but this character kills really early. If you can get like a landing trap with a snooze, like that's going to kill really, really early. Kaboom is amazing. You know, you have, ma of course you have like high rolls where it's like, oh, they're at 30 and magic burst, boom, and then you win. I think this character is very good without the RNG or with average RNG and then is amazing with good RNG. So I think this character is high tier, free. Uh, speaking of zoners that uh, hero beats, I'm going to put Duck Hunt. I think Duck Hunt's really good. The more I think about this character, this character is incredible. The thing that kept Duck Hunt low for me for a while was the fact that Duck Hunt can is a lot different than it was in Smash 4 and is a lot more difficult to send to the correct side. However, Duck Hunt's figured it out. So they're like, okay, so that's like gone. Like the good Duck Hunt players literally just do can successfully now, like all the time. If you want to talk about results, Raito's a top 20 player. Raito is an incredible player, one of the best players from Japan. He's amazing. So result wise, he's there clearly and if you're using that as an argument you're wrong sorry this character has a frame one combo out with can granted it hits duck hunt as well but it's amazing his ledge trapping is super good this character is very versatile this character has a pretty decent recovery now because you can cover with can you can also air dodge um there are a lot of kill confirms with this character with up air or not kill confirms but like uh well yes kill confirms but also like early percent combos with up airs and forward airs and stuff like that which is very very good i think this character is quite strong this character does have a couple of representatives as well from the us they're just not like righto like wisdom is very good ozone that's the other one thank you ozone like i think duckon's good i think duckon's very very good bowser's next bowser's high tier this character really good out of shield options incredible killing but i think this character is a little bit too linear to be any higher than this bowser is a character that is strong, don't get me wrong. This character has landing air into back air, has side B, has up B, has flame breath, has forward tilt two frames, has down tilt two frames, has an invincible up smash, has really just crazy amount of damage, but the character's neutral is okay. If you have the ability to outspace things like short hop side B out of shield or up B out of shield, you're gonna win. You will immediately win the matchup. If you're a character that can hit Bowser and keep Bowser above you, you're gonna lose. Characters like Palu, characters like Pika, characters like Wolf and Fox and Olimar and Mega Man and the Sorties, like all of the Sorties and Joker and Mario. Like this character struggles with a lot of characters and can struggle with other characters too, but like with even matchups, like let's say Rosa or Lucas or Falco, maybe probably Luigi as well. Luigi probably bodies his character. Oh wait, no. Yeah. Fox, Bowser Fox is hard. I'll ignore the one. Falco. Sorry, wrong one. Like this, like Bowser struggles a decent amount just because of his very linear disadvantage state. Cause you know, they're going to down air, you know, they're going to down B or they're going to land in flame breath, which like, isn't good enough. It's not good enough. Granted high tier because his strengths are incredible. You get flame breath at the ledge two frame and does 40%. Pfft, that's a lot of damage, especially for Bowser. You get shield broken. Sometimes you get like, there are so many things that Bowser can do that are good, but he also has flaws. So he's, he's not super consistent. But at the same time, Leon's like top 25. So obviously he can be consistent enough. Good character, definitely high tier, not higher. Have you watched Leon before? Leon mashes down air. Hella. Like, what are you talking about? Actually, I forgot one. Sonic's gonna be a little lower than this. Sonic's high tier, don't get me wrong. Sonic is a good character. Sonic's whiff punishing is incredible. Forward smash two framing is incredible. The ability to time out is insane. Wrath is so good with this character because I'm talking about offline and I don't know Sonic's, Sonic's results offline. Wrath is so talented. Wrath has beaten so many people just off of pure, just grit. And like, how do you time people out for a whole tournament? That's wild. It's so hard. Also, Ken's amazing. Obviously he's top 20 on the PG card. Ken's amazing. But like, this character's good. This character's not amazing. People think this character is like broken, broken. And it's like, okay, like top 40 because that's high tier. But Sonic still has a decent amount of flaws. Sonic honestly is a character that can get outcamped very hard. A couple zoners can do pretty well with this character. I think 
really fast aggressive characters can uh like hit fox and then run away and just kind of avoid sonic's moves like fox i think can do that i think greninja can do that um pikachu definitely wins like there's there's a decent amount of characters that can do pretty well versus sonic but if sonic gets a stock lead you lose like you just lose you just lose you lose at some point people should get good enough where that if sonic loses the stock lead he also loses because you just can avoid his kill moves because he has three like he definitely loses to trading he can lose to big hitboxes but again, like when it's working, it's working. When it's working, it is working. Like granted, sometimes it gets forward smash two frames and you just die. So next up's gonna be Ken. I think Ken is the worst fighting game esque character uh, in the game. I think he's fast, which is good. I think he's good for different matchups compared to Ryu. But I think this character just overall isn't as scary because he doesn't have just like kill moves as much. Uh, granted, he still has like down tilt into crescent or not crescent kick. He has down tilt into. Uh, the half circle back, like the hold Ryu jab, which is very good. His combos are overall worse, in my opinion, and less consistent than Ryu's. His camping ability is worse and less consistent than Ryu's. He's faster, sure, but like his moves are just less scary. And so to me, Ken is worse than, like I said this last uh, tier list too, I think Ken is a bit worse than Ryu as well. Um, the combos game is good, don't get me wrong, but a lot of the stuff can be SDI, especially with like, oh, up air stuff, where it's like, okay, ban Battlefield. Don't let Ken go to Battlefield. Why are you letting Ken go to Battlefield where you can go down tilt, down tilt, strong down tilt, or I don't know the full combo, like down tilt, down tilt, crescent kick, short hop upper, upper short you. Like that shouldn't be working. No, I've thought this for a while. I put this last year, which was like six months ago. Like I think Ken's just worse than Ryu. I've, I've thought that for a long time. Um, granted, he's faster, so in certain matchups where you get heavily out camped, you're going to be a little better. But also, again, his hits matter a lot less, in my opinion. He just he doesn't do as good. Like, if you want to play a neutral character, you play the neutral character with Ryu. If you want to kill earlier, you play Ryu. If you want to be able to randomly Tatsu and kill people, you play Ryu. I think this is about the spot for Big Link. Why is Link's Nair better than half the cast? Link's Nair by itself is like here. That's not half the cast. Link's Nair by itself is like here. Character's good. Oh wait, I forgot Cloud. I'll do him later. You know what else is good? Bomb infinites. You know what else is good? Up behind a shield. You know what else is good? How early he kills consistently. You know what else is good? That's about it. But that's pretty good. It's a lot of stuff. His camp again is okay. His ability to kind of mess with you with bombs is pretty good. But again, it's, it's, it's very interesting. There's the two camps of Link, which are the I want bomb for aggression and then the T form of Link, which is I only want bomb to recover. Like I think in theory, Link is like top 10. If like everyone's like parry, footstooling out of shield with bombs and just killing you. But like, I think Boomerang is an amazing projectile that confirms into forward air or at the very least frame traps and then you can like punish air dodges with forward smash and stuff like that. Like this character is good. Then he has the option of like just Nair. His disadvantage state is very good because you have the ability to just fall on people with Nair or fast fall air dodge or like pluck a bomb, throw a down drift behind kind of like what Rob can do with Gyro, except Rob can't pluck Gyro just out of nowhere. Um, this character kills just stuff into forward air, stuff into up B, forward tilt is strong, up tilt is strong, up smash out of shield is strong, up B out of shield is strong, like this character's kill potential is so good, so consistent. I think this character could definitely go up, but it's hard because like, if you use bomb offensively and it's on the stage and then you get hit off stage, you're gonna die. Like you need bomb to recover. But yeah, I definitely forgot Cloud, my bad. Cloud is high tier IMO. Um, great out of shield option with up B. It's amazing, it's so good. It's one of the best out of shield options in the entire game. Really, like not a ton of combos, but at the same time, each of his moves do like 15 plus. So you do like a two hit combo and it does like 30 or 40. Like fair cross slash does like what, 39 or 42 or something like that, which is crazy. Uh, of course, he is exploitable in his recovery because it's not that great. But at the same time, the inability to edge guard him does exist for some characters because some characters can't mess with upbeat or some characters can't punish that air dodge super well. Or of course, if he has limit. But I would say Cloud like struggles a little bit more than people realize because the patch happened and then Wi-Fi happened. So we haven't had a lot of chance to see offline cloud and offline cloud is a lot worse than online cloud. Like online cloud's top three. Offline cloud is a very solid character. Spargo is an amazing player. His results in SoCal before COVID happened were really, really good. He was like beating everyone, including Nico, who's top 35 PGR. And he's just a good ass player. Spargo's really, really good. No. But uh, I think when people are able to react to his stuff a little bit more, the mix-ups work a little bit less. The mix, you know, he gets punished for up being a little bit easier. He gets edge guarded a little more, and those little things add up to games and sets. Next up is Wii Fit. This character is so not okay. This character got buffed for no reason this patch. She did not need to be buffed. And suddenly, up smash is better. 
and forward air has less lag. Like forward air, if you want, if y'all want to pretend that Falco down air matters, then we fit forward air matters. That's like minus seven. But this character's busted. She can edge camp you, which most characters in the game, honestly, like a good 60% of the game cannot deal with. She does a ton of damage. Why, why in the world did they make up smash faster? I have seen Varun do landing there, full hop there onto smash roll platform, up smash, and it kills people or does 70. That's stupid. That's so good. That's ridiculously good. She has two projectiles. She has better limit in deep breathing. She has a projectile that heals her, which is also stronger now for some reason. Like landing back hit fair combos into forward smash and kills at like 30. Why? Like, I don't know how to play this character. I'm really bad with Weefit. This character is strong. Literally one of the only things she struggles with is characters that low profile her, which granted Pikachu, Vault, that sucks. But Pikachu being good against someone does not mean anything. Otherwise, every character in the game sucks except for like 10. So Weefit's good. We, why did they buff that character? Let me let me check her buffs again. You're like down tilt sends lower. Up smash is so much faster. It's like seven now. Down smash is less lag, but that doesn't really matter. And forward air is just better. And neutral special sends farther. Like, why did they buff up smash? That's so stupid. It's so stupid. It's crazy. This character's nuts. It's so, so good. The small rat Pichu. Pichu's offense is still insane. Like this character hits you and you deal, you get dealt a ton of damage. You get bear looped, you get, have you seen that Japanese Pichu? Uh, what the hell's his name? I don't remember his name, but there's like one Pichu that's putting out combo videos like every couple months, which is wild. This character deals a ton of damage, has amazing edge guarding, not like super, super great edge guarding, but like relative to the cast, like a top 10 edge guard, or not Neotono, it's not Neotono. Neotono is the one that everyone knows, and Neotono is very good and was also, I think, top 20 PGR. So, character has results. Our Fang is doing amazing as well in the States, but like, this character's crazy. The negative of this character is obviously they get camped. Pichu gets camped pretty decently hard. Like, a lot of zoners beat this character, like Samus, like maybe We Fit Trainer, like, and a bunch of characters that can also trade. Like, Pichu also has the Sheik struggle, where it's like, oh, sometimes you're trading and dying. But the thing is, Pichu's offense is so much better than Sheik's, and the kill potential, like, up throw Thunder being a kill confirm is amazing. That is just guaranteed. You have back air offstage, you have forward tilt, which is still really good, you have forward smash two framing, you have down tilt forward smash is still a thing, you have down air's this big for no, like Pichu's this big and down air's this big for no reason. I don't get it. But Pichu's just good. People hell sleep on this character because Void dropped the character, but Pichu still has sauce. Oh, sorry, Nair's minus four. Oh. Yes, that is the Pichu player. Kado Egu, sick. I think next up is Falcon. Falcon's insane. This character became a masher between Falcon Kick, Raptor Boost, and Up Smash. Those moves are now incredible. Raptor Boost now can like connects so consistently to the point where I went through Falcon with a back air, super armored and hit me, even though my body was completely through and behind Falcon. Raptor Boost now combos into stuff for forever. So you get you get Raptor Boost into up air for so long. I'm pretty sure sometimes you can get Raptor Boost into up air land on platform knee. This character just goes burnt. Like this character just, just does good, which is fine. And I'm not insulting the character because I mash too. Pikachu's a mashing character. Like this character now just hits you and you explode. Let me check the other buffs to make sure what they were. Cause I'm pretty sure it was Falcon Kick, up smash, I think like forward smash got buffed or something. Oh no, it was, it was down tilt and dash tech has less lag, but like, Mostly it's gonna be Raptor Boost. Like Falcon Kick or Falcon Kick is now a way stronger kill move. It's literally both. It's stronger and faster. Raptor Boost is insane. Up Smash does like 34 and kills people at 80. I got hit at like 76 one time and died. Like it exploded. Like it wasn't close. Dash Tack is now a safer kill move. Granted, it's still not super great, but it's there. This character's wild now. This character is good. You know, talking to Fatality. Um, and Fatality's always had like a pretty reasonable take on Falcon in my opinion. So is Nixie, but I haven't talked to him yet. And he's like, yeah, I think Falcon loses like maybe 10 or less matchups, which is very, very good, especially considering what Falcon was. And he doesn't consider a lot of those matchups that bad. So I think Falcon is good. I think this character now has crazy whiff punishing that you don't even need a fixed dash back. This character's so good. This character's wild. And then of course had all the other good stuff about this character with the combos of up air and the nair and back air and all those crazy moves. And then it's like, okay, cool, fuck it. Raptor boost, Raptor boost. It's crazy. Shouts to Fatality. It's so hard. They're so close, whatever, it doesn't matter. Ryu's next. So Ryu is run up to your face and mash buttons or he can camp with back dashes because everyone's so scared of his buttons that people th preemptively throw out so many moves 
and then it doesn't matter. And then he runs up and punishes you. Ryu, in my opinion, is so good. His defense is actually very strong. His parry, parry into Shoryu is an incredible option. Parry into up tilt Shoryu is an incredible option. Slightly exploitable recovery, but if you mess up, you might die because up B is super strong. You have the ability as Ryu to just do a ton of damage. Again, it's not gonna be like crazy, amazing combo video type clips because it's like down tilt, down tilt, strong down tilt, down smash, or down tilt, down tilt, down smash, shankarets or whatever you say, shaku. And like it's, it's very consistent, but the thing is Ryu just stands there is a menace and Ryu is one of the only characters that can do nothing and be incredibly scary because of his ability to backdash of course he has auto turnaround which means his ledge trapping is better he has Tatsu which can just be a YOLO kill move on ledge options which is crazy this character is really really good I want to play Vendetta again because he sauced me but I didn't I didn't respect him if I'm being honest like I was like oh it's fucking Ryu what I rolled to Edgard him and then he played neutral dummy well I think yeah I think Ryu is just a really really good character just very consistent and consistency is really really good in this game and then he kills you really early so I changed a bit I thought this character was worse, and then I saw the down tilt up air and down tilt back air kill confirms. Uh, so that's pretty good. So this character now has early kill confirms in terms of Nair up B. Up B just is broken now. It's so strong. It's so dumb. Dash attack is stronger. Down tilt is a little safer on shield. And I think you can do like the down tilt spot dodge down tilt mix up, which is really, really good. Nair up air, of course, isn't going to work as easily as it did but weak hit Nair up air still works. Uh, so I think this character got a lot more varied in terms of what they want to do in neutral, but that's a good thing because now like Ike used to be like, oh, Nair the character. Now it's Nair and down tilt the character and having another option in neutral is very, very good. Um, I don't know. I think, I think Ike is incredible. I think Ike is a really, really good character now. Um, like watching more of Ike playing Ike, playing against Ike. I'm just like, oh, got it. This character kills you all the time or just plays the same neutral really hard to edge guard unless you force them to go low, which is very difficult. Character's just strong. Character's really, really good. Like, I think Ike is a very well buffed high tier because he didn't get like significantly better. He's better. He's not significantly better, but they made him cooler. And then Nair up below. Next up is Samus. This character's nuts. Samus is so good. Samus is such an insanely good character. Her zoning is some of the best in the game. Her kill potential is some of the best in the game overall. She has a good out of shield option in terms of uppy. She has one of she has one of the best edge trappings in the game, if not the single best edge. Bomb into charge shot is wild. Bomb into forward tilt, bomb into up tilt. Did you see like the weak charge shot into Nair? or not Nair, sorry, back air is crazy. She has great air to air. She has great anti airs. Her forward air is so good. She, you know, the only problem with this character is sometimes you struggle to get down, but I think that like, either way, that's not even that big of a deal. I wish, I wish Joker was able to go to more events. I wish Quick was able to come to the US more. They're so good. They're so strong. Did you all see that down air at like 40% is now a kill confirm? Cause you have down air into weak charge shot into forward smash or back air or Nair. It, what? It's crazy! It's so good! Like, this character's insane. This character's kill potential, combo potential, like, obnoxious factor. Like, people, like, everyone gets tilted playing against Samus. And, like, this character's wild. This character's so good. I wish she was fun for me, because she's so good, but she's not fun, so I don't play her. Like, she's heavy, she has a good recovery. The only thing she's missing is, like, a quick spammable aerial. Like, that's it. That's literally it. But then she has Charge Shot, and Charge Shot's, like, the best projectile in the game. I'll put Ness. I think Ness has such good his his aerials are amazing they're spammable they're all relatively safe they're pretty big they're all good out of shield they all combo they all do a ton of damage they put you in awkward situations some of them are disjointed in terms of forward air and up air back air is dummy strong magnet is amazing for uh you know landing differently like the difference between like magnet nair magnet magnet nair and just fast fall nair is like huge like you can't cover all of them like this character is so good the only reason the only reason that this character is not top tier is because if you have a counter sometimes your recovery gets like you lose however honestly that doesn't even happen that much have y'all seen how best ness is recovering recently because i know ness is better on wi-fi and i know that's part of it but the ability for him to mix up the timings for ness's recovery recently have been insane and i feel like it will help a lot offline as well he just has leveled up playing Wi-Fi. And I think he's got a lot better because of it. Like, I think this character is wild. He has some of the, if not the most consistent killing in the entire game because he has the best question mark kill throw in the game. Down smash and up smash for two framing. He has uh, PK fire magnet back air. He had just has back air. He has nair, he has up air. He like everything kills with this character. Forward tilt kills with it. Like everything kills with this character. 
everything. <laughs> it's wild. It's so good. This character's so good. Sometimes he gets walled out, and that's it. Like, that's literally it. Oh, also, I forgot one, sorry. Uh, Yoshi... Yoshi's somewhere above Ike. Yoshi's a really strong character. Great out of shield option, the best combo break in the entire game with uh, double jump, good combos, great killing, a lot of spammable aerials like Nair, forward air, back air, a command grab, pretty hard to edge guard unless you're very specific characters. Down air is really good, although you can SDI it, but it does a ton of damage even if you SDI it. Eggs can make you play passive. Like you can play passive, you can run up to people and try to mix them. Down tilt is an incredible tool for like tech chase setups. You just have a lot. The only reason this character loses is because sometimes when Yoshi's losing, you have to run your face into the opponent and opponents are very good at walling Yoshi out. Like characters like Wolf or Ike or Ness have a very good time, like a very easy time just kind of being like, no, go away, no, go away. Like Lucina as well, maybe maybe less of Roy Crom, but like still probably beat Yoshi, but for different reasons. Like I think Yoshi is a really really strong character, but slightly too there's there's something wrong about Yoshi. Like not like forward tilt is a good ground move, but it's not good enough to kind of make up for the fact that you basically need to jump. Like if Yoshi had better ground options, this character would be busted, but it doesn't. Like run up jab is your best option. Terry Terry's strong. Terry's really good. Run up down tilt. Run up buttons. Confirms out the ass. Killing is crazy with or without go. You know, down tilt, jab, jab, or like down tilt, down tilt, side B works with like the motion side B, which kills really early. Nair side B works. Nair power dunk sometimes works. Jab, jab, power dunk, of course, is a ton of damage. Honestly, the characters, the characters just good. Down tilt, jab, jab, Buster Wolf. Power guys are for two framing or for covering jumps. This character's aerials are pretty good. I think back air is like his worst aerial, but like down air is pretty good. Up air is amazing. Nair and Fair are both incredible. Uh, you get a grab confirm at zero with grab, down throw, up air, charge up, you know, it does like 40. Crazy, because characters like this should not have grab combos. He's good. He's just a good character. And then he just runs up and brrr, like he just brrr, into your face and you lose. Greninja's next. Greninja is incredibly fast, has one of the best whiff punishings in the entire game with dash back, dash forward, dash attack. Really great combos, obviously. You have like dash attack into up air, into back air, and or into dash attack into back air, dash attack into everything, down tilt into everything. Everyone knows Greninja's combos are incredible. The, of course, he doesn't really have great out of shield options, and his recovery is quite exploitable. I think, honestly, people don't edge guard Greninja enough. Because, like, once he side bees, like, you can just run off and fast fall and hit him. Greninja's good. He's a really good character. But I feel like he is slightly too linear. Like, if you are just patient and or over commit your moves against Greninja, that will make him struggle a lot more in a lot more matchups. Uh, you know, also, parrying is key because things like landing Nair, you know, like, a, a lot of his aerial approaches are parry punishable, and they're predictable, because he's, it's not like he has rising aerials that are particularly good, so, but Greninja's just solid, Greninja's really, really good, but he doesn't have quite enough to make him, like, top tier, basically, and then the last high tier is going to be Mega Man, Mega Man, busted. Mega Man's kind of broke. Incredible out of shield options, incredible killing, some of the most obnoxious zoning in the entire game, really strong aerials in terms of up air, forward air, back air. He has leaf shield, which is an incredible move, basically has him at a disadvantage for free. You have great representation with this character with Kamame and Scat and others. Peep nuts the other one, yeah. Probably, like, I could see top tier. I mean, high, like, the best character in high tier, the lowest character in top tier, it doesn't really matter. Mega Man's insane. Pretty decent disadvantage. You have down air, which helps you get out of disadvantage, as well as leaf shield. You have an amazing neutral, because you have both metal blade and forward air and back air and pellets, of course, mostly just blah, 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 like, pellets are good. Pellets are so good. This character is just really strong. Has so many good options. Has a ton of setups. You know, Metal Blade out of shield into up tilt is just, it's so good. Z drop Metal Blade or the air dodge one to like send them forward. People are doing that as well. I think it's good. Mega Man is just a strong character. Yeah, also Plop. And now we are officially in top tier. The first and the lowest top tier is going to be Young Link. Young Link's incredible. The buffs, wild. Character has buttons. Character has projectiles. Character has moves that can wall you out. Three different really good projectiles. So you have uh, Boomerang, Bomb, and Arrow. All of those are so good, and they confirm into something for forever. You have Zare into Up Smash. You have Up B into Up Air. You have Boomerang into Up Air. Up Air getting buffed last patch was so stupid. Don't know why they did that. I thought that Young Link was slightly overrated after the buffs, and then like the more I think about it, I'm just like, damn, this character's nuts. This character just mashes at your face. Which is like, fine. Like, mashing's fine. But Young Link's good. Young Link is so good. 
like amazingly good. Like, unfortunately, didn't have enough time to have a lot of results because Frostbite, ha like, it was patch, Frostbite, gone. And, well, CEO Dream might haven't been known. Like, Young is amazing. He does struggle to recover sometimes, and he does lose to a decent amount of the top tiers, but also he does pretty good versus a lot of the top tiers, too. Like, he loses to, let's say, like, Mario, and Pika, and Palu, and, like, probably Game & Watch. Maybe Lucina. But, like, for the most part, like, Scarecrow is great. Like, does great versus Rob. Does great versus, uh, in my opinion, Peach. Does pretty well versus Inkling, from what I can think. Does good versus Snake. I don't think Beats, but, like, does good. Next up is going to be Olimar. Olimar is really, really good. But the thing that makes Olimar broken and why Olimar does so well against so many people is because people get frustrated and they forget what their options are or they don't keep track of Pikmin. Opponents of Olimar kept with the Pikmin order as well as the Olimar mains do, Olimar is now top tier, like bottom of top tier. Character's incredible. You know, it's not great out of shield options, but good enough out of shield options. You have forward smash, you have up smash, you have, of course, your aerials, which are great. The recovery should be exploitable, but it's not. It's really hard to edge guard uh, Olimar, like as most characters. Characters light, but the character's kill potential is incredible. Once you have one purple, you are a top 15 character. Once you have two purples, you're like top five. Like double purple Olimar is top five. The results of this character are incredible because ignoring the buzz, you have Shuton, who won the biggest and highest ranking S tier of the year so far. Olimar is so good. He's so consistent. He's so consistent. He loses to a decent amount of characters. Now, don't get me wrong, which is why he's not top five or top 10. But wow, this character is good. This character is strong and he will never not be strong. Frame two super armor to get out of combos with a less committal and an air dodge. Great edge trapping that you have to guess. Great jump reads with back air. Like this character is just strong. This character is so good. Next up, I'm going to put Rob. Rob is so interesting because he is a top tier that loses like to 12 characters, but his offense and his good stuff is so good to the point where it doesn't matter. Down tilt is the best down tilt in the game. It's one of the, it's the best ground normal in the entire game. You have Z drop, gyro, nair, you have side B, you have down air, you have back air, you have down throw, up tilt, up air, you have up throw as a kill throw, you have up throw as a combo throw at early percents, you have tech chases, you have so much with this character, but he gets bodied by so many characters. Literally, Rob Pika is awful. Rob Game & Watch is awful. Rob Mario is awful. Rob Young Link is awful. Rob Samus is probably in Samus his favor. Rob Roy is probably in Roy's favor. Rob Zero Suit is bad. Rob Lucina might be bad. Like, Rob Pokemon Trainer doesn't seem fun. Like, there are so many matchups that Rob just struggles in, like, pretty hard, but the representation for this character is insane. Like, and the good stuff with this character is insane. Wadi's top 20. You have Epic Gabriel, who's been doing really well recently. You have Zachary, main Rob, or main or secondary Rob. Like, the character's representation's wild. So good, so consistent. But when he loses, he loses hard. Uh, next up, I'm gonna put her a little low of my opinion, but Min Min, I think Min Min is not okay. She doesn't have a great disadvantage, not gonna lie. There are some times when you get hit and you die. You just die, and that happens sometimes. However, neutral? Arguably the best in the game. Advantage state? Incredible. Combos? Wild. Eyebrows? Fleek. Like, makeup snatched. Like, she's wild. She's so good. And of course, this is like week two where not a lot of people know actually what to do uh, as her. And of course, against her as well. But she's so good. She has some of the most degenerate edge guarding in the entire game with Ram Ram Angle Down. Like, that's crazy. Like, Ram Ram Angle Down is so good. Char smash attack. You have um, the ability to chase people high with up B and then megawatt nair. You have megawatt nair at zero leading to like 50% because you do megawatt nair into jump megawatt tilt into dragon smash tag, which is literally like 50%. Her recovery is not great. I'm not going to lie to you. But also if you're not someone that can go off stage really early and get under her aerials, she's not going to be able, you're not going to be able to edge guard her. If she doesn't have a jump, yeah, she dies. But as Min Min's play, they should learn to keep their jump. And I'm talking to myself. If you keep your jump, your edge, your recovery is fine. Like it's not great. But again, she is so good in so many aspects. And again, this is with people not knowing the patterns that she's going to need to do to keep characters out. This is like, she's so different than every other character that it's really difficult to play as her. She's so good. She's so insane. But like, I think Min Min does well versus Peach, well versus Olimar, well versus every zoner in the entire game, well versus Ness, well versus Game & Watch. She's just good. She's very strong. Literally so good. It's wild. Like, the ability of her to cover multiple areas, like, she can break shields, she can do so much shield pressure, it's like, oh, but if you jump, she loses. It's like, ah, you mean her, one of the best up smashes in the game, and up air that confirms into a ton of stuff? 
Like, her landing arrows are incredible. Landing nares are minus 5, minus 6, and minus 7, respectively, uh, for Megawatt, Dragon, and Ram Ram. Her up air is minus 5. Like, she has good landing arrows, and you have to respect her immediate aerials because getting hit by, like, a short hop Ram Ram nair can lead into Ram Ram tilt Dragon Smash, which can kill you. She can cover herself when landing really, really well. Her down air is good enough to get at a disadvantage sometimes, at the very least. Like, this is so good. She's good. And I know Cosmos agrees with me, and I know MBD agrees with me, so I'm not the only person that thinks this. I think this character is busted, and no one knows what we're doing yet. Like, we, no one knows what they're doing. Krom. Krom's next. Krom's insane. All these characters are good. Top tiers in this game are wild. His combos do so much damage. His advantage state with up air, his speed on the ground, jab, up B are so good. Up B out of shield is incredible. Granted, it's not that fast, I'm being honest, so it's not, like, the best. But, like, Krom does a ton of damage. And also, yes, I think Krom's worse than Roy. I think Roy's better. Um, like jab F smash, Nair jab F smash, Nair F smash, uh, his edge guarding, his two framing ability is so good, but like lol, you hit him off stage and he dies. Like his offense is amazing. His advantage state is neutral is like pretty good, pretty solid, but like he dies. Like more than Min Min, I am. Cause Min Min can at least cover herself with giant aerials and smash attacks. I'm honestly down to put Inkling down here. Cause like the top tiers in this game are just evolving so fast. And I feel like Inkling is not. Inkling is kind of stagnated a little bit, obviously. Not because Cosmos dropped him. This character is just very neutral and isn't cheese enough. This character is not cheese enough. The only characters that I feel like Inkling does incredibly well against is like characters that up throw up air windows are huge, like Snake. Like that matchup is not good. Um, but I feel like other than that, like it's literally just neutral the game. But if you're wrong, like Inkling doesn't combo you super hard. So like if you're wrong sometimes against Inkling, it like doesn't matter. Or like, oh, you get jabbed and then you just kind of camp and Inkling has no way to force approaches because they have to like back air or like go for dash grabs and stuff like that. Like it's it's hard. It's hard for Inkling to do everything they need. Granted, dash is broken, jab is broken, back air is amazing. Like this isn't to say Inkling's bad. It's just Inkling is worse than we thought they were. But like doesn't lose that many matchups, if I'm being honest. Like doesn't get camped out super hard, uh, but loses to like Mario, Pika, probably Peach, maybe Game & Watch, probably Game & Watch. Maybe Joker. No, nah, Joker's like even. Shulk probably. But like Inkling's still really, really good. People that are like, oh my god, Inkling's bad. It's like, no, you're just straight up wrong. You're just incorrect and you are just thinking that one person equals a character. And the only character that that exists for is Pikachu, who's the best character in the game. Um, Pac-Man? Pac-Man's next? He got buttons. He got camping. He got forward smash. Yeah, that's it. He got forward, he's got forward smash. He's got forward smash. That move is the strongest move in the universe. Twice. Great out of shield options with Nair, forward air, edge guarding capabilities, the probably honestly the best recovery in the game in terms of uh, application and not being able to mess with it. Like you need to have something that hits the pellet of side B in order to edge guard him. And that's it. Like this character's nuts, but he does not have degenerate enough combos to be higher. But, like Pac-Man's grab is one of the best grabs in the game. Everyone pretends that that doesn't exist. Like, everyone's like, Pac-Man's grab is bad. It's like, it beats Spot Dodge. It's the only guy that beats Spot Dodge in the game. Galaga's insane. Bell's insane. The other fruits are okay. Mostly those two. Hydrant's really good. Like, one of the biggest problems with Pac-Man, honestly, is the fact that if you have Hydrant out, your disadvantage gets a lot worse because you don't have the ability to poke with Hydrant. But also, that's going to happen, like, sometimes. But at the same time, it's like, oh, you got up aired. And now your Hydrant's av available, so now you Hydrant. So, like, you're not going to really... It's not going to happen that much. Then you have the shenanigans of, like, the water being way too fast. I think Lucina. Lucina is really good. She's really strong, her neutral's amazing. She kills so consistently. Her edge trapping is really good. Her neutral is incredible. But the problem is she has, of the top tiers, one of the worst disadvantages, probably like the third, maybe, fourth worst disadvantage of the top tiers. It's not It's not enough. She's too floaty and doesn't have good hitboxes below her. So it makes it really difficult for her to land, land against characters with good juggle options, which are a lot of characters in this game. Like a lot of characters in this game. Shield is stupid. Her edge guarding is incredible. She's so powerful, but she doesn't have combos. She's not going to hit you once. And like, if you get hit by Lucina, assuming you're not one of the characters that gets edge guarded, you're not like, oh no, I'm gonna die. Like, you're not. You're not going to think you're gonna die when you get hit by Lucina at 20. Side B combos, side B combos don't exist. Those are all fake. Everything with like jump dancing blade into Nair, it's fake. You can just mash it, you can just mash a button. That's, that's all fake. Her results Japan don't lie. No, they don't. Again, top 15 is incredible in this game. This is not a bad thing. She's just not quite as good. Roy, jab side B. I did it, chat. Jab side B is everything you need. Yeah, Roy's dumb. Roy is somehow more consistent than the character with no sour spots. Jab back air is incredible. Jab side B is so good. Up B out of shield is so good and hard to mess with. Down tilt to tech chases. He has forward smash, which is so strong. His 
He has a counter, which makes edge guarding pretty good. He has neutral D, which is a two framing move. He has incredible juggles. Sour spots actually combo. Like there was one time I was playing Goblin and I got down throw, weak up air, strong up air, and it killed me. Like it's so good. It was so, it's so dumb. He's so good. However, his recovery is somewhat exploitable and he's a fast faller, so he gets comboed very hard. Like of the top tiers, I think other than Rob, he gets comboed the hardest. Like I think he gets comboed harder than Wolf and Fox because at least they're light so they, or at least Fox is light so he gets out. Like Roy is so good, but like sometimes he just takes damage and then dies. Mario. The reason that Mario is this good is because he kills you off a of grab, he kills you off a of back air, he kills you off a of up air, he kills you off a of air, he down airs you, forward airs you, forward smashes, broken. The only problem with Mario is sometimes he struggles to kill. He doesn't really have spammable kill moves because up smash and forward smash are both punishable because although that's fast, like up smash is frame nine, I think, frame 10, something like that, it's minus 20 which is punishable by drop shield dash attack by most characters in the game. Like sometimes he just kills you, but also if he, if his hitboxes were a little bigger, he'd be better. But the reason I think that Mario is slightly like not top 10, he, he can't, he can't always kill. There are a lot of times where I've seen Mario struggle to kill, like really struggle to kill. Oof, oof, Mario's so good. He's literally one of the best counterpick characters in the game. Cause if like, if I picked up Mario and someone didn't like, if they're playing against me and they're like, oh, I ban FD Kalos because Pikachu. And I'm like, cool, Yoshi's Mario, I just win. Short hop double bear is good. But a lot of the time, if you do a rising bear, you can get punished by most characters with like an up ear and up air. Landing bear is incredible. But again, like a lot of the times Mario's are doing aerials, they're very obviously timed. So you do like parry into F tilt or parry into something. Uh, and that does happen against Mario like a lot, or it should happen. People are getting better at it and then COVID happened. Like she, he's so good. He's an incredible, incredible character. Uh, but his air to airs and anti airs aren't as good and don't lead to as much, like not a death percent, but like a mid percent. Like up air is not as good of an air to air as a lot of what characters above him have, or he's not fast enough or something like that. Next up's going to be Fox. Fox is really good. Fox's fall speed means that he gets free grabs for days. Fox's edge trapping is incredible. Fox's damage output is insane. His kill potential with Nair up smash or back air and forward smash and up air, so good. He's so good. Side B to uh, like up air and stuff is so good. Passeri Man's Fox is so refreshing, honestly. It is so much fun. His recovery is fairly exploitable. If you have to, if you have to up B, most characters with either counters or big disjointed areas like Lucina back air or a spike can kill you. Um, like granted, if you mess up, you take like 30, which is annoying and that happens. But like Fox's speed is clearly the best part about him because he just makes neutral ambiguous as every character. And he has one of the best whiff punishings in the game with dash attack. Granted, dash attack at zero isn't super great because dash attack up tilt is minus on hit um, at zero specifically. But like character's good. Like the character's so fast, has two really good uh, representatives. ZD was bound to come up again at the end of uh, pre-COVID. There are many, many people that play this character. Uh, Luis is really good, got top eight at Smash Gun. People forget about that. Like people forget about the results of a lot of people, especially Passeri Man who got fourth at Evil Japan. Character has results, stop, <laughs> just don't relax. Like people pretend that it's, oh, it's just light. It's like, y'all just don't pay attention to anyone that's not in top eight. Even though ninth and 13th consistently is like a valid placement. Also Passeri Man's really good and is like, has got like top three at like four Japanese majors in the last three months before COVID. Next. Game & Watch. So just for chat, because I was asking who's better, Game & Watch or Mario? The reason I think Game & Watch is better is because his spammable kill moves are much better spammable kill moves. They basically otherwise do kind of the same thing. Like Mario, of course, has his death combos off the top with like up air up and stuff, but like Game & Watch, Game & Watch's win conditions are so, they're so frequent because it's frustrate your opponent, get hit by uppy, uppy up air, spam up air, spam up air. Oh, you landed with something, dash attack or forward tilt. He has up smash, he has down smash, he has forward tilt. Like down smash kills at like 60 for no reason. And like, it's almost impossible to deal with. His ambiguous ledge animations are so obnoxious to deal with. Like ledge jump is literally like, doesn't have like any time that you can punish it, which is insane. He's so good. Granted. I feel like people are still not great at the Game & Watch matchup overall. I feel like people are not as good at punishing down air or like parrying back air or like doing a bunch of stuff and myself included, but it doesn't mean the character's not broken. There's a reason why Meister, when people are focusing on Game & Watch and getting better against Game & Watch is still doing better and better and better consistently. 
Also, Zachary plays game to watch. So like, you know the character is done when Zachary plays the character. Nair is one of the best arrows in the entire game because something that is very important to me, and I'll talk about that when I get to Pikachu as well, is rising aerials that are safe. Game & Watch's rising instant Nair, which is an anti-air, which is huge and hits the ground, is minus five. What? That's insane. That's so good. That's not okay. That is so silly. And to boot, he's one of the characters that has good matchups against Pikachu, and that matters because like no one has good matchups versus Pikachu. Granted, it's just me, but like in theory, if more people play Pikachu, right? Like Game Watch is insane. Up the out of shield is the best out of shield option in the game. He doesn't lose that many matchups. I think he doesn't do that bad versus Palu after she got nerfed. She obviously beats Peach. She beats Pika. Uh, I think she loses, or he loses to Shulk. Uh, I think even or slight beating Snake, I think does well versus Wario, loses to Zero Suit, uh, loses to Ike, especially probably post buff, like loses to like seven-ish characters, six-ish characters, but like, you can still definitely do it. Like, none of them are unlosable matchups. Meister brought Redacted to game five and should have won but missed a two frame game three and then took Mars to game five. And I think maybe Corrin does a little better now because Corrin got buffed, but like still. So we are officially in our top 10. Snake is 10. Uh, I think Snake could be like seven at best. Snake is just a character that has some of the best defense in the game. It has some of the most difficult to deal with pressure in the entire game. The reason Snake could not be higher than this uh, or like couldn't be much higher than this is because he is one of the hardest characters to play in a tournament setting because he's a lot of thought. He's a lot of paying attention. He's a lot of just difficult stuff. Granted, some stuff is easy. Like against bad players, like Snake is easy because like, oh, grenade back here, grenade near dash deck. Oh, grenade up smash, up smash, up smash, down smash. Like C4, haha, you're gonna forget about it. But the good stuff about Snake is so good. Like grenade trades, again, one of the best combo breaks in the entire game, probably second based on uh, like behind Yoshi because Yoshi jumps is broken. Nikita is one of the best edge garden tools in the entire game. He has down smash two frames. He has up tilt, which is just incredible. He has down throw uh, into like follow-ups or like at least reads. He has dash attack, which is the best dash attack in the game. It's an amazing first option. You know, the, the biggest problem with Snake is that how you play against Snake is pretty universal. Like it's not a matchup dependent thing. Like if you know Snake is, like if you know how to play against Snake, you can play against Snake as a lot of characters. Cause like, oh, you're gonna punish his grenades. You're gonna like figure where he's gonna pull grenades. You're gonna figure how he recovers and how he like air dodges and stuff like that. I don't know. I think uh, like Snake does also lose a decent amount of matchups cause he loses to like Mega Man and Palu and Joker and Fox and maybe Game & Watch, uh, maybe Young Link. Zero suit if I said that, but like also he has a ton of even matchups, which again means that it's on the snake to do better, but he doesn't really like, he doesn't win a ton of matchups, but he doesn't lose a ton of matchups. So it's, it's interesting. And even then like his, his bad matchups, oh, also Inkling's a bad matchup, but like the bad matchups aren't like unwinnable. Game Watch Snake's worst nightmare? Not really. Like you can, you can button Snake Game Watch really well, like with up tilt and down tilt and stuff. Ninth. Pokemon trainer. Charizard's high tier by himself, don't lie. Charizard, in my opinion, is the best Pokemon. I think Charizard is better than Squirtle, is better than Ivysaur. Granted, Ivysaur now has off throw upper, which took Pokemon trainers a year and a half to figure out because Pokemon trainer players. Um, but Pokemon trainer is really, really good. I think Squirtle is incredible at low percents. I think Charizard's the best because you can't, you could, you could play Charizard for a whole game. You could 100% play Charizard for a full game. You'll get comboed, but you'd live until 150, so it doesn't matter. Whereas if you play Squirtle a full game, you die at 70. Frame one swap, the ability to damage rack with Squirtle, the ability to play mid range with Ivysaur. Charizard is so scary. One of the best, if not the best rage person in the entire game, like consistently. Like Charizard's just good. People pretend that Charizard's bad, even though he got buffed and became amazing. Charizard's cheese, Ivysaur is cheese. Squirtle's just consistent damage and pretty decent neutral. Although I think people overrate the neutral because people don't mash enough on Squirtle because Forward Tilt doesn't actually combo into grab until like 40, but people get like Forward Tilt grabbed at zero because they're not hitting buttons correctly. So this character's just strong. Like really good kill potential overall. Jab lock setups. You know, Ivy Sword, Nair up B, back air up B, up down throw up B, up air, up throw up air, Charizard back throw back air, Charizard just up B out of shield, up smash out of shield, stuff like that. Tra trainer's just good, but not cheesy enough to be higher. Speaking of cheese, Wolf. Yo, down smash cheese? Uh, the reason that Wolf is so good is because Wolf, like Fox, can get a lot of grabs because of his amazing air speed and fall speed. So you can get short hop, fast fall, like empty jump grabs, like a lot with Wolf. And it leads into either down throw dash attack or up throw up or up throw forward air or uh, down throw side B if you wanna be greedy or you know forward throw tech chase into like fair back air. Like this character kill potential is so good. He has footstool up, he had a shield, which I know Charlie does a lot. Charlie's my favorite wolf, by the way, because Zachary doesn't play him anymore, rip Zachary's wolf. Like this character is so good. Like laser is amazing. Fair back air is so good. Like back air as just, you can spam back. 
I think Wolves is about as strong as Ike's, if I'm being honest. But, like, this character has such creative kill confirms, too, with, like, uh, fair, weak back air side B. You have a kill throw and back throw. You have really good edge trapping and edge guard. Well, not edge guarding, but, like, two framing with F tilt and down smash. Although, I don't really see people get down smash very often anymore. But, like, this character's good. This character's so good. Like, God. Tweets Wolf is better? Oh, yeah, Tweets Wolf's for sure better, but I like Charlie's about more. Seven. I know who I'm putting at seven. Palutena. I think Palo's overrated. And no, that's not because of recent events. I think Palutena has always been overrated. I think Palu is really strong. She has great aerials. She has great juggling. All the Palu players agree with me. I don't know why. Palu, I swear to God, is the character that every Palu player is like, dude, she's like maybe top. She's like at best fifth. And every other player is just like, no, we're not going to listen to you. To an entire fan, to an entire player base. All of them think Palu's overrated. Like, she doesn't have a ground game. Her ground game is short hop and air, which is good, don't get me wrong, Short Omnir is very good, but she's not as good and as safe as everyone thinks. The nerfs really hurt. She was probably top five before the nerf, although I put her at like six because I'm an asshole. But like she was probably top five before the nerf because down throw back air existed. But now down throw back air doesn't exist and kill except at the very edge at very specific percents. So now this character struggles to kill. If you recover into the stage and hold away from down tilt, you're not going to get down tilt into back air. You're not going to get down tilt into up air. She has to kill you with raw back air reads Really repetitive edge guards if your recovery is bad with Nair and forward air, or she's gonna back throw you. But you don't really like, she doesn't force you into shield on the ground because you can just dash away from her Nair. And if she Nairs and you dashed away, you can dash back in and hit her. And again, I'm speaking of like top tier versus top tier. Like she demolishes a lot of the mid tiers. Don't get me wrong. She's she's one of the characters that's like, oh, this character is their worst matchup Pikachu, Palu, or Shulk. Like people say that, right? Because they do that. But I think a lot of the even matchups are a lot harder than people realize. I think Palu, Palu struggles to kill. I, playing Palu, struggle to kill as much with her as I do with Jigglypuff. Maybe I'm stupid. It's possible that I'm stupid. My Palu wasn't great. But she really doesn't, like, she doesn't kill. Like, oh, landing Nair into up tilt. It's like, oh, so you mean you're going to land at someone with a landing Nair, even though if you do a short hop and you don't Nair immediately, people should be ready to parry because you're going to forward air, you're going to back air. Like, I think this character's overrated. I've thought that for a long time. She's amazing. But again, down throw back air, losing down throw back air was so big and everyone pretends that it wasn't. At sixth, we are going to have Zero Suit Samus. She's so fast. She's insanely fast. Her camping is one of the best in the game, if not the best in the game. She can just decide not to interact. She has Nair into everything. She has Nair into flip kick. She has Nair into fair into flip kick. She has fair into flip kick. She has fair one into up B. She has Zare into up B. Her kill potential is one of the most applicably good in the entire game because of up B out of shield, which is frame four. And down smash, like down smash is so good. Like it two frames, it can hit neutral get up. It can hit jumps. You can do it off of like throws. Like playing this character just felt a hundred percent just like, oh, I can just do what I want. Unless you're playing against people like Roy. Like she does lose a decent amount of matches, which is why I don't think she's top five. But her matchup, her bad matchups aren't awful. Like, Mars wants to pretend she has minus two. By the way, what I've come to realize, and what y'all should realize, is that what top tier character players think is a minus two is probably a minus one. Zero Suit has no minus two. She at worst has a four six matchup, which is, in my opinion, not minus two. It's like, ah, you have to only hit your cheese somewhat consistently. Japan thinks Zero Suit is broken for a reason. Like, her nerf did matter, in my opinion, because she did lose one of her best things of cheese, which was, uh, down B berry into up B, which means that uh, because you can mash out of it, you can actually attempt to edge trap her sometimes. It's like, oh man, my character can't do stuff for free versus this character. That must mean it's terrible, the worst matchup ever. It's like, Zero Suit Wolf sucks. Zero Suit, uh, like, he thinks Zero Suit Pika is minus two when he has like a 5 1 record against the best Pika, and he's not that much better than me, yo. And Shulk, yeah, Shulk is also really bad. Like, Shulk is probably also super bad for Zero Suit, but like, at the same time, she can just run away from everyone. She can just run! She can just run. She can't, she doesn't lose hard. Like, that's why I think Wolf is her worst matchup is because Wolf at least is fast. So if you jump as Zero Suit, Wolf can kind of like run at, like Wolf can jump at her and potentially threaten her. Where Shulk can't, cause Shulk is too slow. But like Zero Suit's so good, she's so fast. She kills effortlessly, effortless. Nair back air, she has stuff into up B. She has up B itself. She has forward smash. She has side B. When like you don't get your early kills, you just side B. No one can, like side B so good. Side B is so good. She's so insane. Or it's so insane. Like this character just doesn't struggle. 
This character literally only struggles with like five characters and they're not even that bad matchups. ZSS is socially acceptable Sonic. Yeah, 100%, I agree. Top five. My top five is literally the same as my last tier list. Top five is Wario. Wario consistently plays a two stock because waft. You literally have to be up an entire stock against Wario, basically at all times. Nair is an amazing out of shield option. He's so mobile. His his dashing is so good. It's so, it's honestly really underrated. People like his air mobility. It's like, dude, his ground mobility is so good. Waft is obviously the cheesiest thing in the entire game. And no one will disagree with me about that. Almost as cheesy as asking for Twitch Primes. Wario is insane. His movement is so good. His ability to just not engage is so good. He is the only character that actively gains something from camping, at least until two minutes. Like every Wario player for some reason is like, oh, but if you like camp Wario, it's not that good. It's like, what do you mean that I have one stock in a game because then you get two wafts? Like, no, that is not how that works. The only thing that beats Wario is consistently good and spaced hitboxes. And that's it. Cause he does ton of damage. Like Nair, upper, upper, upper. Nair, upper, upper, back air. Up tilt is an amazing, is one of the best anti airs in the entire game. You have literally like everything you need, like everything you need in this character. But his hitboxes aren't that good. It's like, okay, so? You know his hitboxes aren't super good either? Pika, you know what everyone says about Pika that doesn't complain about Wario? That Pika's broken, shut up, doesn't matter. Fourth best, Shulk. Shulk's busted. This character's nuts. But Isam, he has no results. You wanna check Evo Japan where he got second, which is again, the biggest tournament that's probably ever happened? You wanna check Nico, who's top 35 on the PGR? He cheats. He, he cheats the most. Wario has the most dumb stuff happen in the game, but Shulk cheats. Shulk is a cheater. Between dial storage, between shield arts, between switching in hit stun, between just forward air cheese, between like between smash art cheese, between just he has everything he needs. Granted, this character's hard. And I'm not going to pretend that this character's not hard because what I learned playing Shulk is this character struggles with zoners and not like losing, but like man, it's stressful. And you have to be on top of every single thing with this character. Like at all times. But like Nico says Shulk is overrated. He goes back and forth on that. That's fine. But like this character's insane. Like this character has so much. Struggles literally the only three matchups I can know that Shulk definitively loses are Snake, Pika, and they said Palu, so I'll say Palu. How do you lose three matchups and have like maybe 10 even ones and think like, oh, this character's not good. Like Shulk beats like half the top tiers too. Like Shulk beats Peach, even with Joker, probably beats Wario, beats Zero Suit, beats Wolf, probably beats Pokemon Trainer, loses to Snake, beats Game & Watch, beats Fox, beats Mario, even probably with Roy and Lucina, beats Pac-Man, like, beats Inkling. Like, what Like what do you need? Like, where's his, lose, where's his losses? Peach is third. Her confirms are ridiculous, and confirms still aren't optimized with this character. There are so many high percent weak Nair confirms, like weak Nair into Rar Float Bear, weak Nair into... Z drop bra turn up into forward smash like all the stuff the mute was doing like there's so much to this character and yes having that many options that are pretty technical it's hard to master but i'm talking about a top level where a person that doesn't know all those combos and doesn't have any of those like all of those crazy confirms doesn't have ling ling combos is the second best player in the world with unoptimized combos for a combo character her neutral is amazing she, like, float is the best mechanic in the entire game. I have got hit by weak Nair so many times against Peaches, and they just don't kill me for it, which they should. Uh, but then there's all the, like, the, the turn-up combos. She, of course, can just randomly get Stitch Face. I know Bomb has negative, so I'm not gonna say the Bomb is, like, broken if you get it. But, like, Stitch Face, dies. Like, those things can just ruin a game. And, of course, she has a really hard to mess with recovery. She has a really hard to mess with disadvantage state because she has float and downer, which is actually incredibly good. Of course, she does lose several matchups. She loses a bit of matchups because she maybe loses to Samus. She loses to Shulk. She might lose to Zero Suit. She loses to Game & Watch, at the very least. Maybe more than that, but at least those. Oh, Pac-Man as well. She loses more matchups than Shulk does. However, her losing matchups are still very doable. Oh, no, she doesn't lose to Samus. Quick thinks that's uh, Peach's favor. Um, Peach, her, her losing matchups are like, cool, it's losing. Time to spam float up air and kill you and like not be able to get around anything, which is so good. It's so, she's so good. Float as a defensive mechanic is so amazing. Float as an offensive mechanic are amazing. She has confirms that kills so much. Again, does she kill as early as she used to? No, but she used to be the best character in the game. Joker is the hardest character to hit in the game. He is so hard to hit. His dashes are so low, and he is so fast, and his jumps are so mobile, and Nair and back air are so good to the point where literally you have to swing at the air to hit Joker. 
and hope that you hit. And if you don't, you're going to take 40. The only reason, in my opinion, this character is not the best character in the game, and you could argue he's the best, and I'm not going to disagree. Like, I'm not terribly... When people come to me and they're like, oh my god, did you hear that this person only put Pikachu as third and they put Joker as the best? I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I think Joker's so hard to hit. Like, Joker can just not engage, almost like Zerasu can, just without flip jump. But, like, his movement overall is so good, and he has amazing projectiles. No, he's for sure harder to hit than Pika. Like, I know that. Like, Pika has pancaking, but, like... In terms of like movement and like playing neutral, like Joker's way harder to hit. And then of course like, oh, you swung at him, time to dash attack. And if he has arsenal, it's like Dish! And like the only reason again that I said that he's not potentially the best character in the game, because he still could be, is the fact that his combo game isn't as good as a lot of the other top tiers. Because if he doesn't have arsen, he's at most going to combo you for like 35, 40. Peach gets a zero to 60. Pikachu gets 0 to 60 or kills you. And like his moves aren't as safe as let's say Zero Suits or like even like Mario's, maybe Game & Watch's because they're falling aerials. But like God, his jumps are so good. And if you're expecting short hop aerials and he does a full hop and you try to parry something, then you get hit or you, you try to hit Joker and then he landing fares you and then drag down up or down smashes you at 90 and you die. Or landing down or up smash you with Arsene, you die. Like Arsene, like this is all, like Arsene's so good. He, like Arsene makes, you remember what I said about Zero Suit where she's like the, the Zerusuit has applicably the most kill potential in the game. Arsene has way more than that. It just, he doesn't have Arsene all the time. That's literally the only reason. But like, Arsene Joker just, he, he just dumps kills. Where he has forward air, up air, down smash. He has forward air itself. He has up air itself. He has up smash. He has down air, up smash. He has Tetracarn. He has back air. He has forward smash. Like, everything kills. Literally everything. He, he can, he has to try to not kill with Arsene. But like, this character is insane. So hard to hit. Gun down is amazing. His edge guarding is so strong both with Arsene and without Arsene. Nair is so good, and it makes him like a tiny little nugget. Like, that's it, he gets so small for no reason. Ba like, he's disjointed, he can, like Fox and Wolf, get a lot of free grabs because of the fact that he goes short hop. You're gonna expect him to aerial, and then you get grabbed, and then you get up throw, up air, drag down on a platform, up throw, up air, or down throw, back air. Down guns are still ridiculous. They're worse than they were before he got nerfed a little bit. And like, the, the Arsene thing does matter, but it doesn't matter enough. It doesn't, it doesn't matter enough. And the best character in the game is Pika. He pancakes, his back air is the second best out of shield option in the entire game. His nair is really good. His edge guarding is the best in the game. His recovery is the second best in the game. His advantage state is one of the best in the game. His kill potential, his applied kill potential is amazing because he has spikes, he has thunder, he has up air bridges. Up air bridges are huge. I could see if Pika didn't have upper bridges, him slowly going down the tier list, at least to like fifth at worst. But now he grabs half the characters in the game and kills them. The combos that Pikachu can consistently get are amazing. His defensive play is so good. Playing just to not get hit as Pika, there are so many times that I'm like at death percent and I'm like, hmm, let me play to not get hit anymore. And then I take a stock and a half before getting hit again or before getting hit by anything meaningful. Cause Pika's light, don't get me wrong. Pikachu dies really early but he's able to position himself in ways that he's not going to get hit by kill moves, basically, ever. It's insane. He's so good. He has a ton of DI mix-ups, a ton of confirms. He has stuff that I even don't do still, which is like uh, nair loops at the ledge into like reverse up tilt into down air, which just kills. Or reverse up tilt into upper bridge, which kills. Like, upper bridges are so stupid. They're so dumb. Like, when I can react to down throw, like, people just the people are just going to die. Joker is going to die. Wario dies. Zero Suit. Pa uh, Palu. Wolf. Snake, uh, who's the next full? Uh, Min Min, Rob, Young Link, Mega Man, like so many characters just get grabbed at like 40 and die. And the thing is, I get you to 40 by back airing you at zero and then nair looping you until the grab at 40 and then you die. Like Pikachu literally has zero to deaths. He's good on basically every stage. I still don't like him on Stadium or Battlefield, but those are personal things. He has confirms everywhere and against even the characters that he doesn't get um, upper bridges, basically he can do like modified upper bridges unless you're a fast faller if you're a fast faller it has to be off stage like fox because then you can do like down throw up air fast fall up air so down throw full hop up air fast fall up air fast fall double jump up air forward air that will work but against floatier characters like peach and game and watch and ness if you are on yoshi's you can get grabbed at like 20 and die that's crazy like pika's so good most i say i feel like the most people put pika as the best in the game at this point what's pika's worst matchup it's either ness or game and watch they're floating somewhere between 55, 45, and 64. And that's it. Because, like, Pika beats Joker, even with Pete's. Beats Shulk, beats Wario, beats Zero Suit, beats Palu, beats Wolf, beats Trainer, even with Sneak. Loses to Game & Watch, beats Fox, even with Mario, 
beats Roy, beats Lucina, even with Pac-Man or beats, beats Inkling, beats Krom, beats Midman, beats Rob, beats Olimar or even, beats Young Link, beats Mega Man, like it's insane. The passive Pika is, like passive Pika is so good, active Pika is so good, and you can instantly turn on and off that because you have Thunder Jolt, which Thunder Jolt's stupid. Thunder Jolt can be a camping tool or it can be a run at your face tool. It's both, it's so good. And that is going to be it for the full tier list. Uh, I'm going to reorder some because I'm just gonna look and see who I think is where now. I think that is going to be it.